It seems you simply were not meant for greater things. Hey guys, look at that. Yeah, I got a webcam now. So you guys have to look at my ugly mug as I'm working now. <clears throat> so we're just running a little bit late, just waiting for Brandon to pop on and stuff. He's having a couple computer issues right now and stuff, but we'll try to get this sorted really quick here. Even got a little bit of an interface and stuff now, you know, not, uh, not messing around anymore. Hey guys, what's going on? Dan, can you hear me? I can, I can, yep. Uh, is that what you look like, Dan? Yes. Awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome. Alright. Decided yesterday, I was like, you know what, it's enough is enough. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a cam. Not just yeah. behind, the, uh, behind the audio anymore. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> Well, welcome to, uh, what is it, uh, six years ago? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Yes. All right, well, I, I guess we'll um, we'll probably wait for, I don't know, maybe um, five, another five minutes or so while people kind of start clambering in. Um, and then, say, probably at uh, 6.10, we'll go ahead and start. Good yeah, that? good. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm still working on my, uh, let's see here. What the chat viewer? Probably delete that. Yeah, guys, if you're watching both streams, um, just mute one of the audios. That way it doesn't um, give uh, uh, audio bounce. Hey, Joy, how's it going, man? Should be good, man. This should be cool. Well, thanks, Cobra. So, just to, just another heads up, guys, um, on the yeah, way yeah. that um, okay. multi Twitch works. So, Dan and I are running um, separate streams, but with this link, you can watch both of us at the same time. So, what that means is that we both have separate chat boxes. So, um, I'm going to be uh, monitoring mine. Dan's going to be monitoring his. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for. Um, questions and so if you have a question um, do uh, at Brendan Isaiah Bankston or at Dan Rorty uh, specifically and then uh, that'll pop out in chat we also have our awesome moderator um, Marcellus Wallace Marcello here uh, he's gonna help us uh, do some moderating and, and um, filtering questions what's up Marcello how you doing buddy so that's pretty much how the um, the format of this will go just to give you guys a heads up Sorry, Joy. Are you are you are you male or female? Sorry, <laughs> I, I get through the habit of accidentally saying "dude" to everybody or "hey, man." So I apologize for that. Yeah, that goes for me too. I say "dude." Yeah. I say "dude" or "man" to every or "guy" to everybody. So if if um, if you're not a dude guy man, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> my bad. All right. So um, I'm going to be recording. Um, this side 
Um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe for next round, um, we'll have to decide a different format uh, for seeing both of our screens. Because um, during my recording, you'll only be able to see my screen, but you'll be able to hear everything. So maybe sure. next time we'll we'll think about a better way for um, recording. But uh, for now, I'll be recording this, um, but you'll see my screen, but you'll be able to hear the whole conversation and everything. Yeah, cool. Yeah, not a, not a big either way. Yeah. It's just a chill, hang out, talk about the industry, answer some questions, shoot the shit kind of day, you know? Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'll probably work on some shit. Um, mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on some shit. But I thought that, yeah, this, I'm gonna probably pay more attention to like what people are typing and mm-hmm. stuff today, just because, like, man, I found it, it was fun, but I found it so difficult last time <laughs> we were streaming, like keeping track of uh, what everybody's saying and stuff. And yeah, it, it, it's, it's definitely tough, man. You're, you're trying to use uh, one side of your brain to do some artwork, you know, and then the other side of the brain, you're trying to like keep everything rolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, I'll be right back. I forgot to grab a glass of water. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Yeah, all good. How's everybody doing today? Good, good, good. So I decided I'd probably work on this guy a little bit today. I don't exactly know what I'm going to do with him or how much I'm going to work on him, but I thought it might be kind of might be fun. So, yep, so I actually went out and decided to get a cam. I was like, enough is enough. No more just lurking with audio and stuff like that, so... But welcome to the stream, everybody. Should have a pretty good, uh, pretty good turnout and stuff today too. So that should be should be pretty cool. Alrighty, I'm back. Right on. All right. So what time we got? Uh, probably about one more minute, and then we'll start intros and all that fun schnaz. Yeah. I'm glad that um, there's somebody else early. Yeah, uh, up early in the morning with me. I'm not well, just I, insane, you know. <laughs> that's what I like about you, Brandon. You're a, you're an eager early morning guy, so that's that's cool. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. Well, you gotta fit. Um, you gotta fit it in where you can. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, Steph. Good morning. Enra. Good morning, Enra. Enra is female. Which she she gave me shit about it the other day. So that, <laughs> that, that, and I felt bad about that. So I, I, I'm, it's tough because you don't. You, some of the names are just so out there. You, you have no idea and stuff. So, but uh, that was a good lesson for me. So I'm, I'm not going to say uh, dude or man anymore and stuff because that's it's rude too. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, it's a force of habit because we're Californians. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, even here and stuff, we say morning, dude, and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So. Hey, I, call, Ryan, going? I call my daughter dude sometimes. You know, it's it's just force a habit. It's endearing. <laughs> endearing. I think it's okay. <laughs> awesome. Bass, yeah, it's probably not. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably not morning everywhere and stuff. So Good That's mor- true. It's actually yeah. only morning here. The only other morning is um, uh, in the Pacific Ocean, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good morning. Okay, Steph. Enra, Steph. Okay, so yes. I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to remember that. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I usually go with, um, you know, if, if your name is purple or pink, um, there's a strong possibility it's a girl. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, maybe that's just a color thing because I'm an artist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I know that Ar- Arnaud is not. What's up, Arnaud? How you doing, man? And but his name is Pink, so I'm not sure. I'd morning. let's just throw that one right out the window. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Bass. Morning, Echo. All right. So um, let's uh, let's start, shall we? Huh? Yeah, let's do it up. Awesome. So welcome everybody. This is uh, just um, kind of a uh, a chat and hangout session with. Um, uh, lead character artist at um, on uh, Gears of War. Um, God, that's so awesome, though. By the way, um, Dan Rorty. 
Dan Rorty. Everybody say hi to Dan Rorty. What's up, Dan? Hello, Brendan. Hello. What's going on? Um, my name is Brendan Isaiah Bankston. Um, you've heard of either one of us, so um, we're both character artists in the uh, in the video game industry. Um, Dan has a little bit more experience than I do in real world, <laughs> um, so that's why we're uh, we're chatting with him today, um, just to. Uh, Really, kind of get a, a good view of how um, the industry works. Um, you know what what it means to be a character artist for video games uh, in the industry as it is currently. Um, you know, pick his brain on 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 uh, tactics and um, art, basically. You know, so um, yeah. so yeah. That so, Dan. Echo, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. How are you, Dan? I'm pretty, pretty good. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, I totally sidestepping off the off the industry stuff, but I took a month off of drinking. So what? I'm going pretty. Yeah. So I took a full. I took a full month uh, or 28 days, and then yesterday I was with the wife, and I was like, you know, fuck it. I feel, feel like it. Feel like a beer. So I went and had a beer, and just <laughs> from one beer, I got a, a bit of a headache this morning. So it's you know, it's amazing how much your tolerance goes down once you don't drink for a while. Oh, I've probably saved. Boatloads of cash, though. Oh yeah, so I, yeah. So anybody who who hasn't taken a break from drinking, if you drink, and I, you know, I'm Canadian. I'm a Canadian Mick, so I I, I do a little <laughs> bit of booze and from, from time to time. But it was a nice break. But uh, no, I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, stuff works going really good. Been doing a lot of a lot of trying to get back and doing some of the personal work and stuff like that. Um, it's been busy, but uh, but overall pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. You know, I, I can't really complain. It's um I'm getting to do uh artwork in my you know, in my passion and yep. um starting to make some you know, make some headway in the industry and um portfolios looking up, you know, I got G D C okay. coming up, like, you know, just just uh trying to do the right thing and, and keep plugging away, you know, at the dream. Uh, great, man. Yeah, the the work in progress students looking rad. I'm just looking over as uh as i'm working away and stuff too awesome man yeah this is uh for if, if you guys this is the first time here this is a a, a concept from uh milan Nikolic. yeah he's um awesome concept artist so uh i didn't do the concept he's on the bottom right of my screen uh so that's what i'm working on dan what are you working on uh so i'm gonna probably work on so anybody who knows this the stuff i'm doing i literally have like seven or eight Hey, Snick, thanks very much for the follow. I appreciate it. Uh, I literally have like six or seven different projects I'm working on. Hopefully I finish some of them. Uh, I recently have been doing the, the Tom Hanks and, and Dead Mouse thing, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and work a little bit on this guy today. What I'm going to do, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe some hands or this and that, but I'm going to work on my, on my pirate dude a little bit. So Probably just some sculpting today. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a lot of rendering. <clears throat> Cool. Okay, uh, just getting caught up here. Jerome, just saying hello and thanks for passing by yesterday. Hey, no worries. No worries. I really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. In our country, they caught one taxi guy and he had 13 all blood in his record so far. That's pretty pretty good. Pretty good. Snick, so you did three years magazine, or I'm still wearing. Hey, thanks, Snick. I appreciate it. <clears throat> awesome. Hey, so, uh, Dan. Give yeah. us a little bit of um, of, of your background, like um, you know the where you started uh, school, you know um, what got you into the industry, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I uh, pretty like I think with with most artists, pretty early on and stuff, I was uh, obsessed with drawing and art and stuff. Both my my mom and my my nana, my grandma, were both. Uh, artists uh not necessarily professionally but they were both they're both really good artists um so i basically had in my blood where if you had extra time you weren't necessarily watching tv you were drawing this and that and stuff so <clears throat> pretty early on i was i was doing a lot of drawing and really into art and stuff uh and originally i wanted to get into comic books i was obsessed with comic books <laughs> uh, had a nice. bunch of stuff like that and then uh when i was 13 um uh, Jurassic, it was a Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jurassic Park was just coming out, or pretty close then, or whatever. So, uh, saw that, and I re you know, hearing that it was all in 3D on a computer and stuff, and it just fucking, just like blew my mind. Right? 
so basically from there, I was 13, I got my first uh, 3D program um, called True Space. Uh, and true, that true space? Yeah, oh, true, I don't think I've even heard of True Space. Uh, you're not. You probably won't find a lot of uh, a lot of copies now. It's it's pretty. It's a pretty passe program now. But that basically got me into 3D, just learning at home uh, after hours by myself on like a, a shitty PC. Um, uh, give me, yeah, this is a huge rundown. So when I was in college, I actually made uh, I made my own video game or whatever, and got a bit of a, a scholarship for it for art and stuff. And then went to AI or CD. It, it was it's the Art Institute now. At that time, it was called CDIS. Um, mm, okay. Basically, lived at school, uh, and I was fortunate enough that when I was when I was in school, I got to, uh, I got contacted by MTV to do a small uh, contract firm, directing like my small animated short on one of their one of their TV shows. Nice. So I, yeah, so it was pretty cool. So I did that, and then right after finished that, basically jumped into uh, local game industries here and worked at. Uh, there was like a first gig was like this outsourcing studio mm-hmm. called Boogeyman, where I worked on uh, Spy Hunter Three, and then went over to Radical, uh, which is which eventually became Activision, uh, and worked on Scarface, Crash Bandicoot, Prototype. Um, Scarface, wow! Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, that, that was fun to work on. Uh, and then thought it was time to basically, you know, try something new and try to go into, uh, try to go to the States and try some different stuff. Hey, Akordak, morning, morning, everybody. Um, went to the States. So this is, this is the truth. I actually went to the States in the hopes. Wait, where were you then? Uh, well, I, I, so born in Vancouver, I was still, Mm. I was still here in Canada in the state or still here in Vancouver. And I went to, um, the States taking a job at 2k but I, I i took a job at 2k with the hopes that eventually i'd be able to go work at uh at lucas arts so nice I, I all right lofty. that's a, that's a lofty goal it was a lofty goal i didn't apply didn't do anything uh and one year into my contract at 2k uh lucas called me up lucas film called me up i was gonna say uh, wait lucas himself called you no no no, no. <laughs> dan <laughs> i need you to come down here <laughs> <laughs> we need you to come down here right away yeah uh yeah they called me up and said hey we're 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 planning to make this new uh, Star Wars IP. Uh, at that time, didn't have a, a name for it, but eventually oh. it became uh, 1313. Uh, breaking my so, heart, man. Yeah, so they said, hey, you know, we're, we're starting this new cool Star Wars project. We're redesigning all the, the old alien creatures and stuff. You know, how, what do you think about, you know, maybe coming over and stuff? We had a, a lead position open. And I jumped at it right away. So I was oh, there yeah. for about, yeah, I was there for about three years. Uh, we released the demo. At, well, sorry, my computer's going a little bit slow, guys. Uh, hey, Shameful, thanks very much for the fall. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I did the I did Star Wars 1313 for about three years. Um, ran into a couple issues and stuff. Like, it never really got off the ground after uh, after the um, E3 thing. Uh, and then I got a call from uh, the guys over on the Tomb Raider, uh, uh, Crystal Dynamics. And they are working on a different IP over there and stuff, too. Uh, they were going to offer me uh, a green card. So I jumped at it, and then basically got to work on one of the franchises there uh, in Tomb Raider. So I got to got to work on making Lara, which is really really cool. Um, wait, wait, hold on one second. So all right, when you were working on Star Wars, you were was that um, that wasn't in studio then? That was uh, con- no, nope, uh, that was that was right in studios. So that was actually in the Presidio. So there's oh, okay. there's two there's two officers. There's one uh, at Skywalker Ranch. Uh, which we ended up Skywalker Ranch did all the concepts and and sound there and stuff, uh, and then the Presidio is where they did all the all the three D stuff. So I was okay, in the Presidio. Got it. I was like that was a pretty awesome time because I was living right down San Francisco. I could walk to work, have a couple beers after work, walk back. It was uh, man, it was, I, it was pretty I, I awesome. I really feel sorry for you, man. That must have sucked so bad. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. It was pretty humbling because the cool thing was, like, you you'd be in an elevator or you'd go to these talks, and like Dennis Murin and John Noel, creator of Photoshop, would be there, and they would, they're just like totally cool, random dudes you would just shoot the shit with and stuff. Right. Um. So that was pretty cool. Uh. And then yeah, I got a call to to come work on to do the Tomb Raider thing. So that was pretty awesome. Going to working working on Lara Croft for the game. Uh, and then after a while, just kind of got a little bit homesick. Just I kind of wanted to come home. I re- I heard that they were starting to do Gears of War over here in Vancouver. Um, uh, I was a, and Gears of War is probably my favorite game franchise. So um, 
something had came up where there was a possibility of going to work on Gears of War. It was back home in my, my town of Vancouver. My wife's from here. I'm from here. Uh, and I jumped on it. Um, and I've been here for just about a year, year and a half almost and stuff. And um, now leading up the new Gears of War 4. So it's been awesome. It's been – so far it's just been incredible. Living so the dream, dude. Living the, the dream. dream. Well, I apologize for going on a huge like blah 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 blah. But no, that's okay because that's I, that I, that's kind of why we're here because we want to know about you. Yeah, it's been so. It's been yeah, it's been pretty cool. And just doing a lot of personal work on the side and stuff, and made some good friends along the way, yourself included. So ah, yeah. So I, I, it's it's cool, man. It's cool to be here. So for anybody else uh, just joining in now, Brandon, why don't you give us a little rundown of yourself as well? Oh man, that well, <laughs> it's that that's a little uh, hard act to follow, man. Um, I, uh, I I really don't um, I don't have a whole lot of uh, in studio experience at this point, um, but I have been an artist pretty much my whole life. I was I was the kid over in the corner in church uh, drawing in my uh, sketchbooks while um, you know uh, the pastor was was kind of going off. So um, God doesn't like that, <laughs> right? Uh, but my, uh, my, it does, uh, it does go run in the family. My, my mother is an artist. She's, uh, more of a, um, traditional painter. She grew up, um, doing, um, uh, watercolor and, uh, oil portraits. Um, so she did that for a really long time. And then she started working on, uh, murals actually. So she, for about the last 25 years, she's been working on, uh, murals. Oh been, wow! Yeah, that's really cool, man. I don't find too many muralists out there anymore. So, oh no! That's yeah, she awesome. she kind of um, found um, her own kind of niche. You know, she did uh, one little job, and then you know somebody really liked it, and then you know she did got another job, and so on and so forth. Next thing you know, it's twenty five years later, and you know, a uh, hundred some odd um, murals. You know, so oh, that's crazy. yeah, it was uh, so I. Um, uh, the rest of my family, no, nobody else is, are really um, artists, but they're musicians. So I'm, I'm pretty much the only one that actually took up the actual um, pen and paper. So yeah, yeah. So um, I grew up uh, drawing for most of my life, uh, and then um, so I saw uh, Toy Story. So the moment that I saw Toy Story, that was the that was the moment for me. I was like, that's what I want to do. Like. Because I want to do art, but I didn't want to do, um, you know, I didn't want to be a fine artist. Because at that time, I was like, well, the only time you make money as a fine artist is if you're dead. And that's not going to work for me. (laughs) Right? Sorry, but yeah. (laughs) So uh, once I saw Toy Story, I was like, oh, my God, this this is going to be huge. I can work in computers, which I love, and I can do art. So. That was the the beginning of the uh, of of this journey that that I've been on. So, the uh, beginning of the end, basically. Yeah, yeah, the beginning of the obsession is what it's been. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Suka, thanks for the follow, man. Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> I I finally found a college. So one of the big things was, uh, and we'll we'll probably touch on this um, a little bit later, uh, which is. Um, art schools and art education. It's such a hot topic right now. We'll, we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later, but uh, okay. at the time um, I really wanted to have a full bachelor's degree because to me um, education is really important. So yeah. I wanted to make sure that I got the art education as well as a full rounded education. So I sought out a college that um, did uh, computer and video imaging, um, 3D modeling and texturing and animation, uh, but also yep. offered a full uh, accredited bachelor's degree. So yep. that that was uh, here in, in California in the Bay Area. It was called uh, Cogswell Polytech. Okay. Yeah. So um, graduated. Uh, so started there in 2003, um, graduated in 2007. Um, and at the time, you, you remember the video game industry in 2007, right? Oh, I do. I do. Yeah, I was right in the thick of things. Yeah. yeah. It, it was uh, all the big shakeups were happening, you know, like EA was, was um, you know, running their slave market. And, <laughs> you know, that was before they um, they really got Did hammered down. Yeah, yeah. So at that time, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of consistency. So... Um, I had a I had an opportunity to work uh, to get a job in the medical and dental industry 
as a as a three D modeler. So instead of going into the video game industry at that time, um, uh, I went into the medical modeling industry. Oh, cool! So I I learned a ton of anatomy and um, you know structures and and all that fun stuff. So that kind of fed the fed the fire kind of in the background. Um, so it was always kind of there. So, but I ended up working in um, the medical and dental industry for about five or six years, and yeah. then um, 2013, I went to my first BlizzCon. Oh, cool! And at that moment, I was just like, you know what? I I gotta get back. I gotta get back into doing video game industry. That's that was yeah. my passion. Uh, I was doing something else for a while, uh, and this is what I have to do. So, yep. November 2013, that's that's when I jumped back on board. Um, but it was really interesting because the things that had changed in the industry between 2007 and 2013, it was completely different, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Completely. I, like, I got back in, I was like, what is this? Like, because ZBrush had come out in 2007, but nobody was really yep. using it yet. In 2013, everyone was using ZBrush. Like, what is this ZBrush thing, right? Kind of popped out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I basically had to relearn everything, right? Uh, workflow, uh, pipeline, um, everything. But character art was the thing that uh, that was consistent, right? Anatomy and um, I don't. You know, I, I, I maybe this is true for you too, Dan. But I love character art because. Um, it, you really get to like express emotion, like just with your particular character, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. it's so amazing that, and I just love anatomy. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> and there's there's no whole there's not a whole lot of anatomy in environment art, so. No, oh, yes. Very little. <laughs> very, very little. little. You'll find very little. Yes, yes. That this is a fact. This is this is true for you guys. Yeah. If you're, you're inspiring. Oh, yeah. Inspiring artists. artists. Yeah, for all the environment art artists out there hoping to do a lot of anatomy, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> exactly. So um, in between 2013 and now, um, I've worked on some smaller projects. Uh, I worked on um, a little indie game that was kind of like a battle chess game, uh, but that ended up not getting funded and kind of got shut down. So there was a whole lot of work you know, down the tube, but uh, lots of experience. Um, and then, um, I worked on a couple other little projects with some, like, character concept art for some people, and it's all very, very small stuff, but, um, I, at GDC last year, um, I met, um, Justin Gobi Fields over at, um, Ironclad Studios. Yep. You know Justin did? No, uh, his, his name sounds familiar. I don't, I don't know him personally. I don't think. Uh, he's a big. Oh, he won the ZBrush, um, uh, the ZBrush belt last year. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Now, now it sounds familiar. Yeah. Sure. So he was like ZBrush king for for like a whole year, basically. Uh, wow. But anyway, say so he's running his own studio down in LA, and um, I got a chance to chat with him, and he was interested in having me come do some some work for him. So um, I did a little bit of. Uh, Danny, thanks for the follow, man. I did a little bit of um, contract work for for him in his studio um, on some undisclosed stuff. So that's about right now the extent of of what I've done. So um, if you know, I'm kind of more the tangible side uh, of this conversation um, for people who are like you know starting to get into the industry and have uh, the aspiring goals that Dan has actually lived through. So. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, it's, every story is different. It's great to yeah. hear, you know, the path and the uh, the starting off from everybody. Because you'll find everybody has totally different stories and different, you know, uh, different upbringings and how they actually got in the industry and, and what they've done along the way. Right, and, he, and you hear that a lot, too, is, you know, oh, how did you get into the industry? You know, how did you get into How did you do it? How did you do it? You know, and it's not, it's completely different for everybody. It totally is. It, it's, yeah, I, I've heard just the craziest wackiest stories and that's basically the way it goes right like you know there's no uh for anybody listening and stuff there's no there's no right or wrong way of kind of breaking in it's basically just breaking in but i'd say always having a a, a good attitude never being too too afraid to actually show your work and take critiques and stuff is is 
super important. So. Right, right. And I, I think it, you may agree with me on this one, uh, but being able to take a good critique, um, uh, you know, with your head up, that is so huge. Oh, man, a absolutely. Like if you're, yeah, you have to have a thick skin and you can't take anything personally and stuff. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been into... When I was working at uh, Lucas, so first thing, 9 o'clock, so regardless of how late you stayed, whether you stayed till 2.30, 2 3.30 in the morning, you had to be at dailies at 9 a.m. every day with um, with the Lucas film team. And we would have ILM in there um, uh, and the whole team. And they would – it would basically be – you'd go into the theater they have there. You put all your, your stuff up on dailies and – it would just get torn apart, like just yeah. torn apart. You, 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 were, you didn't get a lot of, oh, this looks great because of this and that and stuff like that. That's not what happened. Like, yeah, there's they, no ego they stroking. There. No, no, you're, you're not going to see anything like that. So that for me was kind of a good way of actually being at a, at, a, at a big studio where you realize that you have to have a thick skin. You can't take anything personally. Um, hey, Sean, thanks very much for the follow. Um, and yeah, so – but. Yeah, so I, I, w I would agree with you, Brandon. Like, you, you, you have to have a thick skin. You can't you can't take it personally when you're taking critiques. Right, I just exactly. I just want to give a shout-out to everybody who just recently joined on. Thanks very much. Everyone just came on board. Hey, Sage. Good morning. How are you? Uh, how's everyone doing? If anybody has any questions or whatever, you know, yep. feel free to feel free to ask and stuff. If, like, we... We'll probably get in the habit of just blabbing on and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, There's actually a lot of questions that are coming up that... Um, that, that we should probably get to um and yeah. I, guys i apologize I, i'm i'm trying to keep up with chat um but uh it, it's going kind of fast at the moment so um uh, up, marcelo man? is um starting to gather questions um so if you have like a um a serious question you know not just a a regular chat or comment or something um if you have a, a question that you would actually like us to um like talk about Put it. Uh, put question in all caps first, and then dash whatever your question is, um, and then um, we're gonna have Marcelo uh, copy and paste those back in to chat when we are uh, ready for taking some questions. That sounds good. Somebody's saying, "Sup, old man." Damn it! So that's what, happens <laughs> when you get a, what happens when you get a cam? You basically put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Cobra said, "Man, if Brendan doesn't have a job right now, there's no way. For, there's <laughs> there's no hope for me. No, no, man. No, I I have a job. It's just not not doing this at this moment. So uh, that and you know everybody's everybody's story's different. You know, like I I've been doing this for a long time, but uh, I haven't been actively pursuing um, you know character art for you know ten years or anything. It's been you know a couple of." couple of years right and i've yeah. you know i have a family you know i've got a wife and a daughter and i get married and you know all that all that stuff so it's not um you know don't look at where i'm at personally as um you know oh shit well if he doesn't have a job i'm screwed um yeah. i will have one very soon i'm actually doing um i i got some stuff in the works as we speak i just can't say anything about it yet so that's awesome, dude. That's th awesome. things are moving things are moving so we got some – thanks very much, Renan, for the follow. Really appreciate it. And same with Macri. Thank you very much for the follows. Got a couple questions here as well. Questions. How much time do you have at a studio to finish character model with text rate? Yeah, that's from Arnaud, uh, right? Arn, yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, it really kind of depends – oh, Sage, thanks for saying I'm not old. I appreciate that even more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how long does it take – so it really depends on the character you're working on. When, when uh, we were working on Lara, you know – so for an iconic character like Lara Croft, we had we had quite a bit of time. I think in total, she probably took like six or so months in general because you go back and forth, adjust stuff. Um, so for something like that, it's an ongoing thing basically till the end. For a character in general, though, at a, at a studio, you usually get about a month and a half or two months, I would say. It's, it's about right from, from start to finish. So... Well, and uh, take a look at um, what Naughty Dog has been doing with Nathan Drake, right? Yeah. They've been working on Nathan Drake for four years, you know? Oh, it's ever – yeah, it's, it's you're going to find every franchise to it. it it's ever developing. You're always changing it. It's always right. getting updated and but stuff like that. So I, that's, that's pretty common. Yeah, I think that's like the outside the norm though. I think uh, – and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, like an average hero character, uh, maybe like a supporting character or – Will probably take a month to two months, maybe. Yeah, but two two months. So we, I mean, we. 
uh, I think it kind of depends if, if it's not a triple A game or whatever, it probably takes a, a little less time and stuff, but uh, about a month and a half to two months is usually the norm and stuff. Right. So for like a, maybe a background character or a, su- a supporting role or something, what, sure. um, what do you, what do you think, uh, ab- about how long that would take? Well, if you're starting from, from scratch, so we, we try not to distinguish too much difference in, uh, detail quality between like a hero character uh and like a background character yeah obviously it's not going to be quite quite as much or whatever but uh usually usually it would be not quite half the time but but definitely less but you find that we end up getting to reuse a lot of parts you've created before and stuff as well so um, that's a good part got some questions here so kit Uh, so uh uh body bash body slash kit bashing exists in character art oh yeah Absolutely, yep. all the all the time. Well, this this guy I'm working on right now is technically kit bashed because it was starting from a base mesh I kind of already had from a head I was already starting. Um, so this is really rough. I'm not going to use any of this basically. Like uh, the head and body I'm going to start, but I, I'll just start really messing it up. So, right. but yeah, kit bashing all, all the time because yeah. there's no point in redoing something you've done well more than once. You know Thank I mean? you. So usually, well, like when I'm starting a new project, I will use uh, base meshes for body parts. And then I'll just uh, sculpt the crap out of them so that yeah. you know it doesn't look anything like what what we started with. You know that's the point. So anything that can get you closer to the final result faster with say you know doing what you do as an original piece, like hey, more more power to you, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, we got a question here from okay. So Sage is saying free three D modeling programs, better three D sculptures are also free. Yeah, there's three D. So Bob's question. Uh, do you have some advice for freelance 3D character artists? How to afford all these pricey softwares or freelance considering also every studio uses different software? Um, okay, so there's, that's a two-part question. To answer the question with the, the studio, um, it, to be honest, for the most part, Maya now, uh, people do use Max, but Maya seems to be the norm. And when it comes to programs like Mudbox and ZBrush, like I use I use Mudbox, I'm going to eventually switch to ZBrush because I know I'm going to get that. Yeah! <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> Studios don't really care too much of what of what program you're using and stuff for the most part. Um, I think as long as you're pumping out good quality work and the the output is good, I think that that's more or less an issue that from that what people care about. And the other part of the question for the software, I can't really answer this. So I'll t- I'll tell you a little bit about what I've done is I've. So I've used demo versions of the software, posted my stuff a lot to the point where um, software companies like Autodesk, uh, V-Ray, Shaven a Haircut, they've actually given me the programs to use. Oh, that must be nice. Yeah, so I, I <laughs> but that's that's it. I don't think it's as rare as you think because like if you start if you're posting a lot of work and your stuff's getting out there and you're helping to promote their stuff, you'll find that you'll be able to get on betas a lot easier yeah, than 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 otherwise. So. Ah, okay, I can see that. Yeah, maybe I should start asking people. <laughs> of course, I'm, I, you, Brandon, I, I, like, you I'm never just saying know, right? get, Well, your you, your name's getting out there more now as well, just from from doing the Twitch stuff as well. So you you'd be surprised. Put out a, a couple good pieces in that, and you, it's you know it, you find it it's pretty easy to get on to get on betas and stuff as well. So yeah, well, shit. All right, cool, man. Uh, that that gives me something new. That's yeah, awesome. All right, so um. All right, so I'm going to do one of uh, one of my questions here. Um, yeah. uh, Athelion asks, have you ever seen an environment artist make the switch to character artist? Does the lead character artist do uh, the head and associate level artist? There, all right, let's start with the first part. Uh, have you ever sure. seen an environment artist make the switch to a character artist? Yeah, because my for, for me personally, my first gig... Um, at an actual studio when I was working at Radical on Crash Bandicoot, I, I was designing levels and doing effects and lighting. Um, and I let them know that if I was going to stay there, I really wanted to, to do characters. So, yes, absolutely. Awesome. Sweet. Yep. Uh, yep. It is possible. Awesome. So uh, the other part is, does the lead character artist do the head and associate level art artist? Do th- Wait. Oh, okay. So... Does the lead character artist do the head, and the associate level artist do things like accessories? No. Uh, so we have one of our uh, one of our newer artists, uh, Folly 3D, Folly 3D. Um, 
she uh, she's st- she's getting into she she started with us not long ago and she's starting to get into everything that all the character artists would do. So we don't heads are a little bit more tricky. Where if we have a specific style, um, we try to be careful with it. Oh, hang on, sorry, I just got to say hi to the Phoebe. The Phoebe, Mike. If you guys don't know the Phoebe, Mike, you have to you have to follow the Phoebe. You hey, the Phoebe is here. Oh, hey, what's up, Phoebe? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, look at that, the mug, the yeah. mug. So we're trying to do it. Uh, good to see you here, man. So sorry. Anyways, going going back to that. Um, no. So it, at least at our studio, uh, we do everything basically. We have all the character artists, so they're they're talented and rounded enough where they do everything. So there's no there's no small task that's too big or vice versa for anybody else because it's the only way you can really learn and to get to get better at stuff is you have to get into the thick of things mm-hmm. um, and to be well-rounded. So no, at least, at least we're at our studio and stuff like that. We, we do everything start to finish. Everything. Right. So usually one character artist will take care of one character and whatever goes along with that character, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you do find that it, you end up switching back and forth from time to time because it, it just gets so busy and you need, you need uh, we call them hitman now at the studio, not pinch hitters, but hitman. <laughs> we have to have to take on somebody else's character to, to do stuff here and there, but uh, it's always been quite smooth. No one ever takes it personally, um, sure. but yeah, it's always good. Uh, All right, your turn. Go for it. Yeah, sorry, man. Just saying hi to everybody who just who just came in. I asked the company straight up to lend me a license for a couple months. They said yes, as long as I use it for marketing. There you go. Boom. Sean wow. Frisbee. So there you go. Damn. I guess uh, maybe uh, I just started to have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Ryu says I have. Ryu says I have both. Both uh, streams open. It sounds hilarious. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but thank you. <laughs> Question: I am 3D and working in uh, 3D animation domain. I have some experience with high-risk characters. Do you think it's too late for me to begin a career as a character artist? You know, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's a, a good time or or bad time. I think if you're talented, I think you should be able to make the the switch at basically any time. So I don't. Uh, I would say probably you're fine, regardless. Uh, sorry, man. Just gonna get to more of these. What is the job of a junior character artist? Uh, I think to answer, answer that, I think it depends on the skill level. But usually, at least for uh, in my perspective, when I've been dealing with uh, younger junior artists, is give them a little bit of smaller tasks to start off with, and then just give them a really big one to kind of put them out of their comfort zone. Because <laughs> that, but that's the way you're actually gonna. L- learn fail and get better right so you have to be willing to take a to chance uh take a yeah, chance that's, on that's a good younger point. Artists and stuff um and then hello to everybody joe and dur uh atter hello uh good to all see right. y'all uh, i got a couple of questions backing up um that one was a little bit further down the line so let me grab a couple of these um do, 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 do. This is from Cindy94. Um, I'm studying CG. I'd love to hear your opinion when it comes to grades. Uh, my grades are 9.95 to 10. Should I be paying attention to them that much? Could you please point out some sites that I should be posting to? Personally, I think grades don't really matter in in art college. What matters is your, your um, quality of education that you're getting. Um, if you're learning the stuff... Um, and learning all the principles and everything, that's the most important thing. Um, studios don't care about your... Uh, at this point, studios don't, don't care about your degree. Correct, Dan? Uh, so I actually have I have two, two frames of thought uh, about this. Thank you for the recent fall. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't remember who was to just fall, but I, I appreciate it. Thanks Same with me, guys. I, I, I yeah. haven't been able to say thank you for all these follows yet. So big, big thank you, guys. Let's let's make a rule, Brandon. If yeah. someone follows, even if we're talking, we'll just quickly say, "So and so, thank you for the follow." <laughs> okay, got it. All okay? right, cool. All right, okay. Done. Uh, okay, so I have I have two different ways of looking at this. Uh, obviously, studios aren't really gonna. Obviously, studios aren't gonna look at the marks you got in college. Okay, so you can throw throw that out the window. They don't give a shit. However, the United States government does. So if you're going to be working in the states, so I'm I'm Canadian. I I have my uh, green card in the states. Went over to work in the states. They very much do look at your transcripts, your education, uh, and That's define a good point. how you've done in, in the classes. So if you're planning on working overseas, and I know this this is also coming from Efro, who's asking like how you get work over in the states. You actually have to go to school and you have to get an education because <clears throat> the United States is very stringent on. The type of education you have, because they don't want to be just be giving up 
jobs to foreign workers if they're able to do it uh, within the country themselves, right? Which I which I get. <clears throat> so you do need to have a proper education, uh, and your grades have to be at a certain level if you are wanting to go work in the states. So there, there you go. There, there's my my uh, food for thought when it comes to that kind of stuff. If you're worried about a visa, if you're living in the states, chances yeah. are there's so many jobs there anyways. You probably don't have to worry. That's about a good it, point. So I retract that. So if you're in the States, then I don't think that it matters too much. If you're looking for a visa, then yes, it's probably very important. Yeah. Okay, good. Good Good to know. Oh, <laughs> so Ar- Arned, Ar- Arnaud said, uh, what was the job of the junior character artist? And Cobra said he brews coffee. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a production assistant. It's a production assistant. <laughs> I wish we had someone that brews coffee. Um he, this it actually brings up a good point and stuff too, and at least I've I've always done this, and I the, the people I've been around have for the most part done this as well. But um, you, regardless of what the skill level is, how junior and stuff, you treat everybody with respect, and you try to give every you want everybody to have a good time at work. You know, what I mean, you want everybody to be able to do stuff they want to do, to be passionate about work and this and that. So uh, at least with us, we don't. There's no distinguishing difference between any of our artists whether they're you know a year in the industry 10 years in the industry and stuff we we you think of everything as as being basically a team and stuff so we all get to work on cool shit is that is the truth sir yeah that is the truth okay so i think we're finally starting to catch up here (laughs) that's awesome you know guys thank you so much for all the questions man this is this is really um it helps us keep doing stuff like this, you know. There's, I, I mean, even when um, I'm sure Dan, you get this too. Even when uh, we're uh, streaming separately, um, I get a lot of questions about the industry. I'm sure you get a lot of questions about the industry. And, sure. You know, how do you do this and how do you do that and you know, like how do you get in and what do I study and you know, where do I go to school and all this stuff and uh, you know, there's a lot of other good resources out there too. Um, you know, uh, have you ever listened? Do you know who Mache is? Mache, I uh, forget what his last name is. He's a concept artist. Um, Maybe terrible with names. I would um, know the I would know the art, but terrible with names. Yeah. Hey, Marcelo, can you? I, I think you know Mache. Uh, he's a concept artist. If you can maybe grab me his art station, it would be awesome. But anyways, uh, he does um, a thing called Art Cafe. And it's kind of a little bit similar thing where he'll he'll jump on and um, do some Photoshop work or do some concept work while he talks to somebody else about the industry. Um, there's uh, like Anthony Jones. Um, oh yeah, and, no, Anthony Jones. Yeah, so it's so those guys like um, uh, Dan Levisi. Um, yep. uh, so there's kind of like a tight knit group over there, and they have they do a lot of the same stuff. So. Uh, it's really inspiring to hear them talk uh, about the industry. So that's kind of like where. Um, my, uh, there, there's uh, Mache's art station. I, I know that you guys have heard or at least seen his work. Uh, but Art uh, Art Cafe is another great um, stream where he talks about the industry and stuff. So, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of like my um, inspiration is like really trying to let people know that it's possible. You know, to get information out there to answer questions to you know you're not alone you know you're uh, i am alone in in my dark hovel of a office at home when i'm work but you're not alone you know in in the world there's so many people that are working on uh game art let alone character art you know yeah absolutely no, that's it's, it's absolutely absolutely true absolutely true um yeah so oh so i got another question here yeah. uh, uh are lead artist positions only given to those who were part of the company for a few projects? I'm sure it's unheard of for Mr. Tamzine. Thanks thanks for the follow. Persons in the industry as a lead role. I'm asking only because I've been liking to arrange and planning a project, supervising a project. Um, yikes. Uh, okay, so yeah, I think you you need to be at a company. I think for a little while for for you to actually be able to lead a project and stuff to begin with. Uh, it's going to be kind of tough to just jump into a lead role. With uh, without being one previously and stuff. Um, that being said, though, too, like it, it, leading and being a lead at a project is not. It's definitely not for everybody, either. You know what I mean? Like, 
Um, there's a there's a lot that comes with it. Some stuff that's not quite as fun as, as you would think, and it's it's uh, being a lead isn't it's not necessarily for everybody. But it, it basically to answer your question, yeah, I think you have to be at a studio for a little bit and uh, try to prove yourself first before you can before you be worried about getting a lead. Just be worried about working on a cool project. All right. So uh, I think um, uh, the other side of that is I actually worked. Um, as as lead artist on um on that on that small indie game that I worked on, but that was because um, you know, it, it, I had the most experience at that point. Sure. Right. So it's yep. it's really about who's you know, and it's not just I make the best art, so I'm lead. It's really no. more managerial. Like, hey, how are you at um you know managing things? You know. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, okay. So we got a couple of things here yeah. really quickly. Thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. IP production is awesome. Stealth Monkey, how did the how did the Dead Mouse Five turn out? Oh, okay. So this is kind of interesting. So I'm I'm uh, friends with a uh, a DJ called uh, Dead Mouse. For anybody who doesn't know him, he, he's like a he does like e, uh, EDM or some. <laughs> he does E. <laughs> no, no, no EDM. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. He's pretty pretty well known uh, DJ. So. Um, I've been working on his head for him or whatever. It's good for both of us and stuff. We're buddies. Been working on like his likeness and stuff. And he actually came on the stream uh, two days ago, I think. So he actually came on and stream with me as I was actually working on stuff. So it's it's really cool actually. So if you listen, uh, if anybody wants, they can go back and listen and stuff. Where I actually had him on the stream and we talked back and forth and shot the shit and stuff. So oh, that's cool. Pretty cool. Yep. Uh, Wed. Yep. Hey, hey, Eric. How's it going? Yep. I finally got a webcam. I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. It's time. It's time. Uh, Joe, man. Say, hey, Joe, how's it going, man? When learning realistic textures, what are the best practices to follow to get to your level where you are? Uh, practice, 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 I think, for the most part. Um, try to think of a texture, at least when you're doing skin and stuff, as being uh, unshadowed and no specularity. I think people have a tendency, especially if they're coming from a game background, to put a lot of shadow, spec, and AO into their actual textures. And that's probably not the best practice. Uh, PBR so, will do that, right? Yeah. yeah. I got a good okay. I got a good question when you got a second. Yeah. Oh, we got, hang on, just one more. Uh, yep. Steve's saying, I sit next to a guy who started as a tester, wanted to get, uh, wanted to be a character artist. He needs to get much better. So he got harsh feedback and took it to heart. Yeah. Got Don't. good enough to where he was given small tasks, worked his way to junior artist, uh, and was super pumped. Worked hard for years and was made a senior uh, was made a character artist and a senior artist, but he's the most valuable artist in the team because he's proven himself irreplaceable. That's a great story, there you man. Go. Yep. Awesome. Keep uh, going, man. That's yep. the thing. Is like, hey, don't don't look at um, a failure as a failure and that you should stop. Look at it as another learning lesson. Uh, do you have any, do you have, I have more here. Yeah, I got, I, I got one Go that's kind of back it up a little bit. So, um, Loris, uh, Lossbury, um, has a really good question. Uh, I have a lot of different styles in my portfolio. I heard that it's super important to focus on a specific style to get a job in the game industry. Is this true? How do you feel about different styles, uh, in your portfolio? Oh, do you want, do you want to, do you want to take that one or do you want me oh, to no, take Oh, uh, no, you, you start and I'll, um, I'll back you up. Uh, I think showing variety is never, is never a bad thing. I think it, it really kind of depends on the, the need of the project, right? Um, like if you're going to be working on like a, just for, for me, if I'm working on a Tomb Raider game or Star Wars or Gears of War and stuff like that, where realism is kind of the heavy focus, I should definitely have some of that on my portfolio. Um, if I want to work on like a Crash Bandicoot or something game, it's good to show that you can do that kind of, that kind of stuff as well. Would you have think, different portfolios yeah. set up so that you could so let's let's say you want to apply for a Crash Bandicoot or like a you know Blizzard style job, but you also have lots of realistic stuff. Do, would you suggest maybe having two different locations where one focuses on one uh, one style and the other focuses on another yeah. style? The the issue with that is you want to try to make a name for yourself, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, you if you're going to make a name for yourself, you're going to get you you are going to get tight cast in a way that you're showing what you're best at putting all your best work out. I'm not saying you can't do both. You can't do cartoony. You, you can't, it's not that you can't do cartoony stuff or, or the realistic stuff. Um, 
Uh, I don't know if I necessarily have two portfolios. Uh, actually, even the, the FIB actually might be better to ask this as well. I I don't know though. Two portfolios. That's that's kind of a that's kind of a, a, a tough one. An interesting story is um, a few years back, I was talking to Blizzard about about a role working there, and they were straight up saying like, "Look, you know, we, we really like your stuff, but it's more realistic than mm-hmm. we think that you know that you'd like to do." And I was like, "Yeah, I totally get that. Totally get it." So I, and I, I understand all that shit. Right. right. So, I, I and uh, so what I would say is um, figure out what you like best. Right. I do you, like where do you get the most reward? Uh, do you, is it out of stylized or is it out of uh, realistic? Because it's really two sides of the coin. Right. Absolutely. Um, so I and so the thing is is that what I'm what I hear from a lot of people is that I just want a job. Right, so if I have stylistic stuff and realistic stuff, it's more chances of me getting a job at more locations. And I don't think that you should approach it that way. I think you should approach it as figure out which style you like the best, and imagine yourself at the the top end of whatever that is. Would you, you think you would be happy working on something like that? Would you be happy working on Nathan Drake or Gears of War or Laura Croft? Right, at that high of a level, or would you be more happy working on um, like Heroes of the Storm style stuff, right? Yeah, Figure out what you want and then go for that. Like really sit down and, and, and have a conversation with yourself and then focus uh, your work towards that area. Don't focus on, I'm just trying to get a job. Focus on, this is the style that I really like and I'm going to be badass at this style, right? Yep. I, w- I would totally agree with that, dude. I think that's that's a, a really good way of, uh, of putting it. But it's also okay to have some of the other side in your portfolio, just maybe not um, slimetry. Thank you for the follow, man. Uh, maybe not, um, you know, when, when somebody goes to your portfolio, you want them to be able to look at it and go, oh, he does this, right? And then if they're interested, it's they like your stuff. Making sure my thing works. Okay, uh, okay. yes, yeah, I keep going. Yeah. Uh, if they like your stuff, then they can scroll down and say, oh, but he also does uh, uh, some other styles too. Oh, okay, cool. You know, then, you know, he's got more than just one typecast style. Thanks for the follow, New. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a really good point, man. I, th- I think you basically, I think you nailed it. Okay, cool. Um, get some more stuff here. Sir Mountain, bummed I missed it. Sir, uh, Sir Mountain, just go back, man. I, I have, uh, I think I even posted on Facebook, like our whole conversations on there and stuff like that. It's cool. Okay, Dan, you're actually living the dream. BFFs with Ted Mouse, lead character for Gears of War. Uh, yeah, so we actually became pretty good. We're actually going to go up there, probably stay with him in the summer for a couple of days and stuff. He's just a he's just a cool dude. We have a long common. He's just a nice guy. So, hey, thanks, Cat, for the uh, for the kind words. I appreciate that. What are you rendering in Maya? Yes, I'm using Maya and V-Ray. Drab says, "Hey, man, how's it going, man? What about photo photogrammetry? Is it the 3D scan that maybe called the future of 3D sculpting? I'm not sure about that, dude. I'm not entirely sure." New, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, fun making it. I, we still do all our heads by hand, so um, I think. It, but you it, start from a base mesh, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely start from a base mesh. There's no point in starting from a sphere every time. <laughs> You're gonna make a head. So anybody who, who thinks that don't don't do that. It's uh, it's silly. Not necessarily um, true. No, that's true. It's my experience. It's only used as base mesh to actually treat. Yep. Titan, that's good, good feedback. Do you also make 2D art like drawing and paintings? Uh, yeah, I haven't done it for a while. Um, I used to be, uh, I used to want to get into comic books, so I have a bunch of like <clears throat> comics I've uh, drawn in the past and stuff. I'm probably a little bit, probably pretty sketchy nowadays and stuff. But yeah, no I, pun I, intended. I, yeah, no pun intended. Put a boom. <laughs> Is there a place for cute stuff or more realistic stuff? Uh, zero. Yeah, there probably is. I don't know exactly where. Uh, you. Well, what was the question? To, is there a place for more working on cute stuff, but more realistic style? Yeah, I think so. I don't know exactly. You'd have to find a game studio or a project that's like that, but I'm not entirely sure. And he says, "You look like you." Thank you, Lossbury. Thank you for the follow. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of. Um, if you look at like maybe like um, Japanese style games, right? They usually have a little bit more of like the cute style, but more realistic, kind of like uh, Final Fantasy. Or, um, you know, uh, like, so Namco, Na- Namco Bandai? Namco? Yeah. yeah. 
they might have some stuff uh, along those lines, but uh, I think the Japanese market is uh, is big into cutesy while staying realistic. Yeah, I think it really <clears> depends <throat> on your style. I I would I I could not work on that. That would drive uh, me. T- me neither. <laughs> yeah, I would probably do something else. But like, uh, if I have to do another Japanese schoolgirl in a bikini, I'm well, just going to shoot myself. One I think is okay. But <laughs> hey, hey, lost free. Thanks very much for the follow. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Hey, Dan. Hey, Optim. How's it going? Uh, is this MS Paint? Yes. MS Paint? No, no, this is Mario Paint. Mario Paint, yeah. Which has an awesome soundtrack, by the way. Oh, Show us awesome. your old comic sketches. <laughs> Honestly, eh, not today. Eh. I did I did promise the, uh, everybody, though, that I would show... I don't have it on me right now, but I actually have my old demo reel from, like... Oh, like, man, we would love to see that. Fucking 12 years ago or oh. something. Uh, I'm, I won't do it today because I'd have to dig it up and I just haven't had time. But next time we stream, let's let's plan it. Maybe I, we'll, if if you want, Brandon, we'll do a dual stream next week or some. I'll uh, I'll show it. Oh uh, yeah, we. You, ha- I, you know what? I think we just have to do it just to see that. Yeah. <laughs> you will be utterly underwhelmed. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, it's it it makes it makes you a little bit more tangible, and that's that's what it's it's really about. Yeah, I think yeah. I mean, like my my demo reel was nothing really special. I back in the day though, um, you didn't really do specific. Hey, Dar, thanks very much for the follow, man. I appreciate it. You didn't really do um, you didn't do demo reels based off of like what you wanted to get into. You would do like movies. So that's what I did. I actually did a, a like a full little movie. That being said, that was good because MTV picked it up and I I did a, a contract for them and stuff. But right. now you would, now you would specialize, right? Yeah, it's well, yeah, especially if you're looking for um, like a, a larger studio, right? Exactly. If yeah. you really want to target smaller studios, then I would say um, do a little bit of everything. You know, do uh, so. Here's here's the here's the thing, right? So, if you're looking for, so one of my big questions uh, before was, man, you know, character art is really really tough to get into there's if you take a look at the number of jobs available in the studio between character art and environment art right it's like night and day right you have a lot more environment artists thank you uh optimidium thank you for the follow you have a lot more uh environment artists than you do character artists true oh yeah big time right so yeah. the number of jobs available is significantly less for a character artist than it is for an environment artist yeah, it's true. There's there's no getting around that. That's <laughs> absolutely it's, true. It's just the nature of you have less characters than assets, uh, than environment pieces in the game. That's just the nature of it, right? So inevitably, a, any character artist who's looking to get into the industry will come up to the question of, hey, maybe I should do environment art because I really want to work and I'm sick of just sitting here in my, my office at home, right? Yeah. So. I found a clever way to go about showing that you can, that you are a character artist, but you can do other things, is to. Well, first and foremost, I think you need to you need to focus mainly on what you want to do, so that no matter who looks at your portfolio, they you can see right away. Oh, he wants to do this, or he's a character artist. Okay, got it. But uh, an interesting way to go about adding other um uh <clears throat> elements into it so you know maybe i can apply for an uh a um, environment artist job since they don't have any character artists so one of the ways of getting around that i've i've found or including uh information that may make that recruiter say oh well we don't have any character artist positions but we do have some environment stuff yeah. is make a diorama for your character Oh, it's a great idea, right? Yeah, that's that's a, that's an awesome idea. Yeah. That's- so if uh, so, each character, right? That's your centerpiece, right? I am a character artist. However, it also shows that you can do some really cool environment stuff as well, right? Or vehicle, you know, if it's standing, you know, if your character standing next to a vehicle or has some guns, or you know, is standing in um, a cool looking uh, environment, right? It yeah. shows the people that you're. Th- showing your um, reel to that this guy also can do this other stuff we really 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 love his stuff we don't have any um, open character artist positions right now but 
we can bring him on. We want to snag this guy up because he's that good. And once something opens up, maybe we can get him in. Is that that's a really yeah? That, I, I, that's actually a great point, Brennan. Uh, you're going to find companies. Obviously, if you're specializing in one thing, that's that's good and that helps your cause and stuff. But if you're a really good modeler, texture and stuff, companies will will scoop you up just because of that. So that's you know. Um, if you have a well-rounded portfolio where you can show off your skills, not necessarily caring too much about the subject matter, like you just said, doing a diorama or something like that, that's, mm-hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a good way of breaking in. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And I just got a couple things <clears throat> Yeah, Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what texture and tools you use? I use my box. I use my box. Hi, uh, welcome to the 3D Sculpting. Yeah, no worries, Darth. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, want to talk about animators compared to artists. The... Uh, Character animators created to character artists. I don't know if I want to start that. Hey, did <laughs> how's it going? <clears throat> oh yeah, cameras here. Look at that. Got a camera. Huh? Huh? So yeah, <laughs> finally, finally did it. I thought enough was enough. Uh, can I get a job as a rigger without having animation experience? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yes, you can. There we go. That's it for me. I'm just gonna use the uh, restroom really quick, uh, okay. Brandon. I'll be right back. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. All yours. All right. Um, okay, so let's see what else we got. Um, Cobra, I'll wait for Dan to get back for to answer uh, that question. Um, anyway, I'm I'm glad to hear that uh, that you guys are liking it so far. Um, yeah. So. Um, Yeah, there's lots of fun stuff going on. Um, uh, the questions are, are really good. Uh, it kind of helps um, lead uh, into different areas of um, of chatting. So definitely keep the keep the questions coming. Let's see what else we got. Um. Just got to ask you, do you have? <laughs> yeah, Cobra. Yes, I do have Swedish ancestors. Um, my grandfather on my on my dad's side was 100% Swedish. Hence the hence the last name, Bengt, son of Bengt. That is. Uh, uh, the rest of it is Irish. Um. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, what do I think about substance painter and substance designer? Um, I definitely will, will have Dan uh, chime in on this too, but um, I love Substance Painter. Um, what Substance Painter did for the industry so far is 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 amazing, right? Uh, before, um, you know, when you're painting materials and stuff, and and deciding how you want to go about divvying up, you know, what's metallic, what's specular, what's you know, uh, what's what's metal. You know, like how do I make this look like metal? I got to figure out the the right color for it, and then I got to figure out the right grayscale value for the reflectancy, all that stuff. Like it was a, it was a, it was tough in and of itself. But um, what substance des- uh, painter and designer have done uh, is gives you the ability to um, kind of step away from that technical side and really just get back to the art of um, texturing, right? Um, Dan, we're talking about substance painter and substance designer. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, what, you know, the single thing that got me with substance was the fact, and, you know, Quixel for this, for this matter, um, is that you can go in and say, well, oh, I, I want to paint this, um, material, right? You're Back not the painting, you're not painting a color, you're not painting into the, um, gloss channel or or metallic channel or spec channel you're literally saying that i want this particular part to be uh gold right or rusty gold and you just paint that on and then it it determines what information goes to different um (coughs) like spec map spec or gloss or metallic uh rough right and that's that was the amazing part right you don't have to figure out all the different avenues of splitting up um, uh, colors and values and stuff in Photoshop and then trying to kind of hack together 
different um, roughness and metal and all that stuff. It gives you the opportunity to just say, I want this material painted here, I paint it, and then it does goes off and does the rest, right? Yeah. Um, okay, got to get a little bit caught up here. Okay, all right, hit it. Ay, 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 ay. Hang on. Uh, let me see here. Juke, okay. I'll get back to you on that one. Go ahead. Something, oh, Phoebe's just giving some... Uh, some good feedback. Feed. Again, are you gonna are you gonna show uh, are you gonna do educational streams like showing us how to do things not necessarily in Mudbox? Uh, I mean, I'm kind of doing that now, I guess, kind of just with showing the random process. Uh, question beyond modeling, well, what do you find useful for three artists like rendering, rigging, skinning, blah 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 blah? Um, ZBrush. And V-Ray, I think you can't go wrong. That's just my opinion. And j learning Maya, though, is super important, I think. Great feeble, yes. Uh, let's see, obviously, blah, blah, blah. Dan, do you have, do you ha what do you think about this? My first video, don't have experience with animation. Okay, so Alien Girl has put up a video, which we can, if we want, we can take a look at. <clears throat> you down for that, Brent? Ah, uh, sure. Okay. And let me just go through the rest of these really quickly. Uh, yeah, the character is... Holy cow. Okay, yeah. I think I got caught up. I I got caught up. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so this is from Alien Girl. All right, and thank you for your patience, guys. Uh, we got a lot of questions coming in, yeah. so thanks. To thanks be honest, for... yeah, I was going to say, like, I'll be working on stuff kind of, but it might be easier just to kind of be really chill. About yeah, yeah, how yeah. Much that's... Stuff we'll get, we'll get it, done. It, so. This time it's a little bit more of a talk than a, a show. Yeah. All right, so your feed is um, about 40 seconds behind um, our live talking, so I won't be able to see anything for oh, okay, a little sorry. bit on your side. That's okay, that's okay. Hey Sven, how you doing? Oh, this is getting very dark. <laughs> hey, love Simon. Thank you for the follow. So this is from Alien Girl. Okay, uh, the video is a little bit choppy, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna rely on you for feedback for this one. Okay. And and we may do this in the future too, Dan. Is um, have uh, so like a a, a um, feedback session where um, I think that'd guys, be good. Yeah. yeah. Critique uh, session. Oh, cover your Swedish too. Awesome, man. So I probably won't watch the the full thing, Alien Girl. All right, my daughter's up. She's gonna come say hi to everybody. Okay, cool. Thanks for joining, Alien Girl. Um, hi, hi, bud. Let's see this real quick. Hi, you want to say hi to everybody? Hello, good morning. Uh, if you guys are uh, regulars on my stream, uh, my daughter gets up. Every morning she gets up, she comes and says hi. Says hi to daddy for a little bit and sees all the all the fun monster art that I'm working on. Yeah. You say hi to everybody? Hi. Hi. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> all right, ready for this? This is awesome. The stylus. <laughs> yeah it's not for eating though okay yeah what is that that's called a stylus and you just draw right on there and it moves the thing on the screen like this look whoa whoa is that cool she just learned the other day what uh, light switches do I've never seen somebody so amazed at light switches <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable man that's pretty cool that's awesome 
That is awesome. Hey, is my stream going for you? Uh, I think it may be frozen on my side. I'm not sure. It's yeah, it's going. It's a little bit. It's a little bit choppy, but it might be because uh, yeah, I don't, I've got a lot of stuff running right now, and yeah, because it too. started adding stuff into my actual like interface, it's a little bit choppy. I'm gonna kill this render actually. Um, thank Dalian girl. Yeah, hey, for three or four days, that's that's pretty that? awesome. If you're serious about doing actual animation, I would just focus maybe on just like a small part of that as opposed to like this huge video, but good for you. Yeah, say hi. I'm sorry, I couldn't watch the whole thing. It was getting a little bit choppy on my, on my computer. Can you, say, can you say hi to Dan? Hi, Dan. Hi. Hi, Dan. <laughs> She's a little starstruck right now. Oh, this God. This game is also kid-friendly. Yes, this is a, for the moment. For the moment, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I just got a couple more questions here. Uh, Dan, you messed around with the texturing XYZ. What are your thoughts on it worth investing? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Titan, if you get a chance, man, I, I would uh, I would pick it up. I, I haven't used it on this head or anything just yet. Texture XYZ? Yeah, I, I would definitely look at it. And Geox says, would I be doing a full character stream on here in Twitch? Oh, that's a I, lot. I'm doing, <laughs> man, that's yeah, that's tough. I'm doing. Um, I mean, I'm doing a bunch of things on here, not necessarily uh, a start to finish one. This guy was kind of start to finish, though, for the most part. I built built most of this guy on here. Um, hey, Massey, thanks for the follow. Uh, I think I, if I was going to do something Twitch dependent, I would wait until I don't even know if it's possible. But if it was a subscription based thing, then I then I would. If not, because I I have very little time to go back and forth on stuff and a lot of stuff. A lot of time, I'm not necessarily streaming when I'm working on it, so I don't think I would do it unless I was like a like a uh, a subscription based type thing. Yeah, it's 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 tough because it's such a long process, and uh, the hours that you dump into a full character are a lot, and you pretty much like have to not have a job, <laughs> and you can stream all day uh, in order in order to do that. So that's kind of what I'm doing on this character. Is uh, I started this guy basically from a sphere um, or from base meshes. And uh, I'm working on him um, just on uh, just on the streams, basically. Okay, cool. say bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Okay, mom. And then uh, zero says, Dan, I'm not sure it's a good thing, but you're better looking than your portrait. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think something's hitting on you, man. No, I don't know about that. Mm. I don't know if that's it. Hey, Dan, I was just thinking, why uh, why not have you guys talking? Talking with name on your stream. Just thinking, why not? Why not have the guy with your talking name in his stream? Oh shit! Yeah, you know what? Damn it! That's a good idea. That's a good point. What's that? My bad. Because uh, I got my stream going right now, but I don't. I never change my actual. Oh yeah. But to be to be honest though, if you look, uh, if you look, I mean, it, I don't know if it really makes a difference. We're right beside each other when it comes to viewership and stuff right now. Yeah, I'm actually gonna change it real quick on mine because I have something. Okay, yeah, I'll change mine too. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the heads yeah. That's up. good. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Hey, odd fellows, how's it going? Uh, I haven't, to be honest, man, I haven't really done anything with this. So this is I. I find that like with me and Brennan talking back and forth, the banter back and forth, and just talking with uh, people who are coming in and stuff, I've literally done shit. I know, right? <laughs> it's tough. Uh, yeah, which is fine. Uh, do, 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 hey, damage is singing. Thanks very much. Gumroad, maybe a Gumroad. By the way, you talked about how you did. Uh, by the way, you talked about how you did sculpt demos for, but you didn't show it. Uh, I can actually work. You know what? I can work a little bit on the dead mouse head right now. He actually came into the stream um, day before yesterday, and we talked. I don't know if you were here earlier, but there's a. He came in and we talked and shit, shot the shit. It was uh. It was pretty cool. So I'll work. Yeah, maybe I'll work on his head for a little bit. All right, I got a quick question here from yeah. uh, Milky Bar Kid. Uh, is there a UV wrapping method in ZBrush, or do you have to export to Maya and Max? Um, it's all for you. Yeah, <laughs> Dan doesn't do a whole lot of uh, ZBrush, so I'll take this one. Um, yes, you can do UVs in here. Um, so there's 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 uh, good parts and bad parts to it. Um, and I use, and most people use, a collaborative effort between ZBrush and um, another 3D core program like Modo or Maya or Max. 
So um, ZBrush, yes, you can do it in here, uh, but setting up your seams is really, really difficult. You don't have a whole lot of control about over how you set up your seams, um, but the, the actual um, UV flattening algorithms in ZBrush are really, really good. So um, what I tend to do is um, I'll use Modo for setting up my my overall seams and general uh, uh, shells but then uh, I don't worry about placement or um, flattening them out or mm. making sure that they're nice and um, looking good right without much distortion what I do is I'll export it back over to ZBrush and then do uh, if you go into Z plugin UV master and then you do use existing UV seams and unwrap, um, you get the best of both worlds. So you have ZBrush's uh, unwrap algorithm working on your already pre-existing uh, UV seams. So you get a little bit of the best of the both worlds. So you can go back and forth um, by exporting the OBJ and importing the OBJ between a core program and ZBrush and get the best of both worlds. So that's usually what I do. And a lot of people do the same thing too. There you go. Bro Zelly, thank you for the follow, man. Uh, UV knowledge okay. bomb. <laughs> yeah, what do you do your UVs in? You're doing Maya, right? Yeah, I do either Maya or uh, UV layout. I have UV layout on here as well. I don't okay. use it quite as much, but okay. And, and so, how is that in the um, in the studio? Do you guys just use? Um, we have UV layout in the studio you do, too. In the, in the uh, studio. I think for the most part we use Maya though. Like the new Maya, the new with the new Maya and stuff, it's it's pretty good. You know, it's not bad. Um, someone's saying, overheard you saying, moved from Canada to the States. You're talking about university. I'm located in Germany. I want to work in the States. I have a two-year bachelor's degree in, uh, in game studies. About when you're in your uh, bachelor's is good. I think you need, uh, I'm trying to think how much, how, many, how much experience you need now. I think it's... Attrition zero. Thank you for the follow, man. With school and work, I think you need a total of six years, I believe. For to get a TN, but I don't know what the visa is like from Germany to, to Canada. Shit, man, that's almost a doctorate. Yeah. <laughs> I work to use Mudbox or ZBrush. Mudbox, baby. He, I will be converting him to ZBrush very soon. Can't and actually, so can. you no, know like, that that brings up another good point is that um, uh, I I have been thinking about um, if you're interested in this, Dan. Okay. Um, doing um a, a ZBrush lesson for you. Oh, do a uh, live stream, you mean? Yeah. That'd be awesome. I, I would totally take you up on that, man. Just uh, from from opening uh, the uh, program to getting your first sculpt out. That would be that would be really cool. I think people would get a kick out of it, too. Really? Uh, what do you guys he, think? He's useless. <laughs> this guy's lead character artist? Guy, he doesn't even know ZBrush. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I could do his job. <laughs> uh that'd be great man like i'm not I'm, I, yeah yeah you yeah. know you're com you're a very very competent person you've been doing this for a long time it's just knowing where the tools are yeah i think like that would actually be awesome dude i that'd be that'd be sweet yeah let's uh i will think about doing that yeah absolutely and then uh, of course we'll invite all you guys so anybody who yeah. wants to jump in and and Make learn fun it as i'm doing it yeah yeah man i i, I Someone, I was talking to other people about this and stuff too, because I show a lot of like work in progress stuff, and even though it's it doesn't look great or it's not finished and stuff, it's like, well, who who cares? You know, it's just like if you can't if you can't kind of poke fun at yourself and all that kind of stuff, then it's like right, exactly. Uh, Clyde, I'm not sure about Roadkill. I don't really use it, uh, but any way that you can get the UVs out the way that you want to, it's embedded in the OBJ, so it doesn't matter which way that you do it. Which you know, you use whatever works best. Do you think 3D scanning is going to replace modeling in the near future? Uh, probably to some degree. There's still a lot of cleanup that's needed. Um, I don't know. I mean, scanning's been around for a long time. Long time. Long it hasn't time. taken over yet. If it hasn't taken over yet, then I don't, I don't know necessarily if it will. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, question. Do you recommend... Uh, this is from... Uh, Amen Z. Do you recommend character artists to make their own concept or just sculpt base of the other artists in their portfolio? Uh, you could start with this one and I'll follow up. 
Uh, I, if if you, if uh, it's a good design, I think you're you're all good for it. I don't think there's a problem with it. Um, if you're just worried about the craft, though, as opposed to worry too much about being a designer, using a concept is is fine as well. I don't. I think you go either way. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that. To be honest with you. Yeah, I I think if if you want to get into more, if you want to do concept design. Um, then yes, I think it's good to, to use your own stuff. But it is also um, a really big need in your portfolio. Yeah. Uh, and and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, is to show that you can take somebody else's concept art and make it into 3D, right? Because that's a skill in and of itself. Yes, absolutely. Right. So you want to at least be able to show that you can translate at, probably at least one concept that somebody else has done. Into That's a good point. Yep. But always, always ask the concept artist, or at least attempt to. Right? Uh, it's it's just good form. I agree with that. Yeah, I like I've 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 had the fortune. I've worked with some really awesome um, concept artists, and the good the fun part is going back and forth. But like, if they're the ones who created the actual design and stuff, most mm -hmm. of the time they're pretty open with um, interpretation with stuff. But it's it's kind of nice being able to work back and forth on the design with a concept artist, like you're doing right now, Brendan. Mm -hmm. That's that's always fun. You know what I mean? Oh man, it was so nice being able to have Milan on on stream. Uh, yeah, that was, was cool. Just, I, I caught that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was awesome, and you know it it it's really cool for for them as well too. You know they. It only exists to them on t in two D. So to yeah. be able to see it like actually taking form uh, is is huge, right? It's like you know, watching your baby grow up, you know. Yeah, it's 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 pretty rad, actually. I could tweet out that I'm working on um, the dead mouse head, but uh, well, we I, we got to probably cut it in about a half hour, so. Oh, okay, You're I might go. Enough. What time is it right now? Seven thirty. I might go till like eight thirty or something like that. So okay, I gotta jump out at uh, by the very latest, uh, like eight ten, eight fifteen. Okay, all right, sounds good. Cool, sounds good. Is it okay to play to place whips on your portfolio? Uh, hmm. if, yeah, they have to be pretty well defined whips. Yeah, I do have some whips on on my. I do have some whips on my portfolio, but they're still somewhat polished alien girl design thank you for the follow it's like really random kind of shit but. yeah i'd say as long as it looks really really good yeah yeah i agree with that uh i got some questions here vids but wait a year spending university counts as two work experience years it's something like that man i can't i can't quite remember it's been a long time since i've had to go through the process of that but yes i believe it's something like that I think it's the same as asking motion capture to replace animators helps greatly. Yep. There was need for modelers. I would agree with that. Good answer. Is it okay to have a blog on your portfolio website where you post whips? I, like I said, I think if it's working, I think it's, if it's well defined enough and stuff, I think you're, I think you're okay. I do put, I put whips more on my, um, on my Facebook site than anything else actually shit i should probably start like it i don't have a bot or anything that does any of that stuff. oh man you don't have a bot oh geez i don't even have a bot oh, we gotta get you up and run it. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. whip stands for work in progress yeah i'll show uh one of these days I'll, I'll show you how to set up uh night bot or or marcello can help you out with that yeah that'd be great man like i just finding time to do all this stuff is like <sighs> yep yep Exactly. Uh, the other thing uh, is my my character team, uh, the character artists I work with, who are awesome, by the way. They're going to start streaming, and probably you're going to start streaming this uh, Sunday. What? Uh, cool. So I, I I'd like I'm going to try to get on, do like a stream with them or or something as well, because they're super talented, super awesome guys, guys and girls. So be cool. That's awesome, man. Who knows? Maybe w one day I'll I'll be streaming with you guys, uh, like that. Oh yeah, man! Absolutely, absolutely. No, no, no. As in, you know, uh, as in being one of the character artists that works for you. Oh, there you go, man. <laughs> there you go. Never know. Never. Hey, Cato, thanks very much for the follow. 
Yeah, we have it. We're we're stocked up right now and stuff. But we there is times where we're just like really where we really need somebody. You yeah. Know what I mean? Well, hey, um, I'm looking. So if if uh, if you think that you may need somebody from the states, from California, should should be something. Okay, man. Will do. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely looking right now. I've I, I've got a couple of leads uh, as we speak. I can't really talk about, but man, gears would be so awesome, dude. <laughs> Plug their channel, okay? Whips, yeah, I get it because I have two high poly cars in my art station, but they're rendered out using Mentoray. I think Whips are okay. I put Whips every once in a while on art station, uh, but not, not very often. All right, so I got something for you, Dan. Yeah, uh, true, true Mantzir, um is asked. No, 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 sorry. Uh, Jotun. Uh, Brendan, can you show Dan how the move topology works? Um, I asked him the other day how it would translate to yeah, Mudbox, but he did not know about the tool. Move topology. Okay. So, um, so I have, uh, so you can see my screen, right? It's going to be a little bit delayed for you, but uh, you'll see it eventually. So there's a, a brush called um, the move tool, right? It's a move but uh, it is called move topology, which means okay, that basically um, if you have two separate meshes that are on the same layer that are together, right? Yeah. Um, they're not connected by geometry, but they're on the same layer or however that works. So move topology uh, will know what you click on and will only affect that mesh, right? So like if... Um, Let's see, what do I have here? Let me see if I can find something that has this. Mm, do, 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 do. I'm going to find a piece here. No, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Hold on, sorry. Let me see if I can find. <laughs> Let me find an example here. All right. So I'm just going to... I'm going to merge the, the eyes down to uh, the head. But I'll be able to separate them later. So let me grab this guy, and then let me find my eyes. Move that to the top. Dreamy! Save Thank you for the first. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to take and... to be lower. Okay. Okay. So um, the the model that I have right now is yep. uh, highlighted with uh, the topology here. All right. You're just showing the the uh, the wireframes, but you can see that the eyeballs are on the same layer as uh, the head. All right. So with yep. the move topology. Um, I could literally go in and whatever I click on, it will only move that particular mesh. So uh, if I'm on the eyeball, or if I'm on the um, the eyelid, I can move the eyelid without moving the uh, eyeball. But if I click on the eyeball, I can move the eyeball without moving the eyelid. So it's it um, takes into account uh, your connected topology, basically. So if it's if you click on one thing, it will move only what is connected to that topology and not the other stuff. Does that kind of make sense? E are they so? They're are you saying it's just one combined object? Kind yes. Of thing? Yeah, it's one combined object. Thank you, Dreamy Tear, for the follow. Oh, they're uh, so. Is there something is there like that in Mudbox? They're still separate objects, though, right? Like they're still they're not. Are they connect? You you still have they're technically separate pieces of Geo. Right. So they would be on the same layer, but uh, the geometry is not connected. Oh well. Yeah, because Mudbox, Mudbox handles them as technically separate objects, kind of thing. Okay. Because we they don't use uh they don't use the um sub tool like the the whole sub tool or whatever they're treated as different uh, different objects. Like I have these eyes in here or whatever, um, but it doesn't doesn't move the eyes, like it it you it, it won't do that. And the other way of going about it is there's like a, you see how this is moving. 
all this up like this, like it's moving the whole thing, it's going off of uh, volume as opposed to surface. Mm -hmm. But if I was to change that to surface, it'll move just the bottom lid. Okay, so then that's pretty much the same thing. It's the same thing there here too, because like yep. you'll have a regular move brush that doesn't take into account topology, and then you have a move topology brush that will take into account whether something's connected or enough. Okay. So yes, it is the same thing. Okay, maybe the same thing. Yeah. All right. I do want to get in a ZBrush, though. God damn it. <laughs> right, well, you will, man. We'll, we'll do it soon. We'll do yeah, it soon. Cool, man. What do you guys think of Mari? Uh, it's good for film. We used it. Uh, yeah, so Joe, I used it on um, I used it on Star Wars 1313. We, it was like brand new at the time. I think that was like five years ago. It was still in the beta process, I think, but that was basically it. Here for lips. Hey, I'm just gonna, I'm here, but I'm just gonna call the wife real quick, Brennan. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Uh, no problem, Joe Tun. No, no problem. Um, trying to uh, explain the transpose tool to somebody who doesn't know ZBrush is a little bit more of a hefty project. <laughs> um, WK P Merica. Um, do you guys do portfolio reviews on stream if you we present one? Uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about it. Hey, Blue. How'd it go? Hey, Dan, uh, mute your stream. That's awesome. And then they'll, did they say when they'll let you know or no? Dan. You know, I'm not sure if they ship it off or <laughs> if they the test actually there. I have no idea, actually. I'm not entirely sure. I love you bunches, though. Bunches and bunches. How's it going? That's going pretty good. have 140 viewers right now. That's good. Okay, we're, viewers we're going to listen to his, right uh, now, actually, you know what, hold on. Then, uh, basically a bunch in uh, Brennan's stream right now too, so it's pretty good. It's cool. Got about 200 and something between both of us. That's awesome. Hold on, guys. We're right back. Yeah. Love you, sweetie. Got a still really bad headache. I haven't been able to shake it. Yeah. All right, you back, Dan? Yeah. Well, let's hang out tonight. What do you think, dude? No, I'll take them today. All right, guys. Um, I just uh, just killed Skype because uh, I couldn't mute him for some reason. Anyways, um, I'll, I'll ju have him jump back on here in a second. We we'll give him a, a little privacy. <laughs> um, all right. So ba -ba -ba, we're talking about. So yeah. Um, we're talking about doing, uh, Dan and I are talking about doing a portfolio review or um, critique session. So uh, that's, that's, in the, um, that's in, the, in the plans. We're talking about it right now. So it's, it's possible. I know, he was about to reveal the secret codes. <laughs> I was like, no, no, Dan, 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 mute, mute, mute. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um but yeah, they, they, big big thanks to you guys uh, for, for hanging out. Um, I really uh, appreciate all the support and everything and trying to get to uh, as much of the, as many of the questions uh, as we can. So um, love having you guys here um, and I definitely appreciate the support. Solid Designer 3D, thank you very much for the follow, man. I appreciate it. Um, okay, trying to catch up uh, on the chat here. Yeah, that was my low key hire me. <laughs> uh, I'm always looking. Yeah, I know this guy looks a little gearsy, doesn't he? Um, uh, which render engine do you recommend the most? Mental Ray, V Ray, Arnold, or Marmoset? Uh, I think it really uh, depends on. It really depends on what your output is, right? If you're if you're um, if you're looking to do uh, like a real time video game asset, uh, I would definitely say probably Marmoset would be best, uh, mostly because it shows in real time and um, whoever is viewing your stuff can can look at it, turn it around, and really get a good idea for the full um, project, right? So. 
But if you're really just doing like presentation stills, um, like maybe for portfolio or stuff, uh, Keyshot is amazing, um, and uh, V-Ray is really awesome. Uh, I don't really use Mental Ray too much, um, so it was mostly because I I prefer V-Ray over Mental Ray. So Armor Set Tool Bag is really good. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't used Arnold, so I can't really say. All right, I think it looks like Dan's back, so I'm gonna give him a call back here. Yo, there we go. Hey, dude, you, you didn't, you didn't. Uh, <laughs> we're like, <laughs> we're like, dude, mute, mute it, mute it, mute it. <laughs> no, it, mute it. <laughs> didn't say anything bad anyway, so it's okay. Oh, uh, somebody was like, "Oh, he's about to tell us. He's about oh, no, to tell no. us the secrets." Oh, no. It's kind of funny. Those people are just like, uh, "Mute, uh, mute." It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's like, "Oh, we love you too. Uh, we love you bunches too, Dan." That's okay. That's all right. Hold on. Uh, oh, just getting, let me awesome. get some of this stuff here. A nice segue to stop talking about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, using multi switch. Blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, yeah, I was just on just on thirteen thirteen. I had a chance to work closely with ILM on some of their facial stuff, which was pretty awesome, uh, and that helped me kind of build the facial system for for Tomb Raider for Lara Croft. But yeah, but basically just on thirteen thirteen. Mute, mute, mute. We can hear your phone call, Dan. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Welcome, I guess. For yeah, favorites on how to use their tools. Hear you. Oops. Be right back. <laughs> All right, so somebody was asking. Um, let me get back up to it here real quick. Uh, uh, which render engine do you recommend the most? Mental Ray, V Ray, Arnold, uh, or Marmoset Toolbag? So I kind of touched on this a little bit about um, depends on what your output is. You know, if you want a still image for a portfolio, uh, or if you're looking for a real time renderer. Um, sure. Yeah, so uh, so a little bit of your feedback on that. I use Mudbox just because I've been most comfortable with it. Um, we I've used Mari before where it was connected to Unreal, so we'd be able to see the shaders kind of live update and stuff. Um, I haven't used Substance Painter or Marmoset or anything like that and stuff, so I can't really comment on it, but I, I, I like using Mudbox for the most part. <clears throat> Cool. Question: Do you find it very difficult to sculpt high frequency detail on pores and also skin diffuse? Any advice on that? Uh, I, I I think the X Y Z stuff has been really really helpful, and I actually I've been using it quite a bit when I've had time. So um, I love it. Turn a turn. This is a, this is just a picture of him. It's not rendered or anything like. This isn't a render. <laughs> I was like, that looks pretty realistic, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you work? Uh, can, Congrats, Rick. Hey, thanks, Lincoln. I appreciate it, man. Uh, showing us any facial system? No, I can't show anything about that. I'm sorry, yeah. man. Hey, uh, Attrition Shiro is asking if we can um, crit something on our station. I think we're going to um, save crits for uh, another stream where we can kind of give everybody the chance to send us some stuff. So um, I'd say let, let's hold off on, on – uh, any crits until uh, that stream because I, I really want to give due, dil due, dil due diligence uh, but I want to make sure that uh, we get all the answers questions answered. God, yeah. I need some more coffee dude. Jesus Christ. Yeah. God. It's all good. Hey, is the volume better now, uh, Echo? I think my volume is a little bit low. It should be better now though. It should be better now. It works. Sounds okay over here. Okay, good. Good. Subsidec. This is cool. Wow, we got a. It was this was pretty successful today. We ended up having like uh, quite a quite a few viewers come on and stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, it's been really it's been really good. We had a good um, steady influx of, of awesome questions. Yeah, um, it was great. This is really helpful for I think for people and stuff too. But uh, it's fun just shooting the shit back and forth. Yeah, and it is talking shop, yeah. man. Yeah. So let's talk shop. All right. I think we. Ah, had, okay. Do you have any other questions that are that are looming? Nope, I got nothing over okay, good. nothing over here. So let's talk about the hot topic right now. Uh, Farsaf, thank you for the follow. The division. Mr. Trom, thank you for the follow. Hey, Turn, how you doing? Um, uh, Ebladen, thank you for the follow, man. Thank you. Say it again. Uh, the division. 
Tom Clancy's The Division. You've seen you've seen the um, the beta uh, stuff that that's out. Yeah, so I haven't seen I haven't seen a ton of the new stuff. I, I remember seeing some of the older stuff that was that was on there. Uh, um, they're I've doing been, uh, live beta streams right now. Oh no shit! Really? Yeah. So after so after we're after we're done with this here pretty soon, uh, I encourage you guys to go check out um, the Ubisoft Division uh, stream. Uh, they're streaming twenty four seven over the whole weekend while the, um, the while the beta is going. Oh wow! Yeah. So how's it how's it looking? It looks awesome, man. It was looks awesome. They actually had the um, uh, one of one of the lead character artists streaming for a while last night, and uh, he was talking a lot about. Um, what what went into uh, thanks Travis for the follow man appreciate it uh, colorful flock hat thank you for the follow he was talking about uh, you know the the production and like how they went about um, uh, creating all the clothes and and different layers to the um, to the characters and stuff it was really oh, interesting cool. yeah that's cool but it looks am- thank amazing you for the like their yeah. attention to to realistic um, now present style clothing. Awesome, man! Just that's really cool. Yeah. Okay. El bon. Bladin. El Bladin. I think that's how you say. It. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate yeah. it. Bob Bronco. Thank you for you. the follow, man. So you did set up a camp. I did. I set up a camp. Look at this. Look at this. I don't know if this will deter people from watching now, but. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got a really, really, really important question. Sure, man. Go ahead. All right. How many cups of coffee do you deem appropriate in one day? Oh, geez. So this is awful because <laughs> I drink a lot of – I actually drink a lot of coffee, probably more than I should. Since I since I took a break from drinking uh, alcohol, I've – my, my – uh, Coffee consumption coffee has gone through the roof. Coffee consumption has gone <laughs> – so I actually have uh, – Amency, thank have, you for the follow. I make, I make really, really strong coffee. I have about – three cups a day i'm trying to get it down to like one or two but it it kind of fucks me up actually so i gotta i gotta be a little more careful about the about the coffee um I actually, you know what there's there's uh to make you feel better uh or not thank you for the follow to make you feel better there's uh actual scientific studies uh proving that um four to six don't quote me on this you have to look that up for yourself but from what i remember four to six cups of coffee in a day is actually really helpful and beneficial to your long-term life okay there you go probably not the way and the strongness that i make my coffee. <laughs> i know i make mud coffee too oh man oh yeah no it's... kidding <laughs> so I, I do drink a lot of coffee but and uh... you, you know what it's uh, it has to do with like you don't have time to drink eight cups of coffee so what you do is you make your coffee stronger so you only have to drink one cup to every three cups I do something uh, pretty similar to that. Yeah. Right? I mean, just, yeah. I mean, you know, that's what we do. We, 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 <laughs> you know, we make things easier on ourselves, right? So, you know, I don't have time to do all that. So, you just put like three cups into one cup and then you're good. You just sip on that. You don't have to get back up and go back, grab more coffee. It's awesome. Hey, man. Thanks very much for the follow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Dude. So, to give you an idea, we, uh, we, have, uh, we have these really nice coffee machines at, at Microsoft. Like, <laughs> they're these big, huge Starbucks coffee machines. But we're so snobby with the coffee. Me and John the Smigo, guys, thank you for the follow. We actually brought in our own coffee machine and brew, <laughs> brew our own coffee. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I bought myself an um, um, espresso machine a couple of years ago. Oh, cool. Yeah, hey, got to do it, right? Yep. Uh, anyone know if that stream was recorded? I'm not sure what you mean, Millie. Uh, this stream? Yes, we're, we're, we're we are recording. Uh, I'm recording this stream right now. Sure. Um, the only drawback is that you'll oh, only be able cool. to see uh, my screen, but you'll be able to hear both of us. So. Oh yeah, that's that's fine. Like I, I'm. This is it. This is obviously already recording on mine that I'm just going to leave there and stuff. So if yeah. anybody wants to. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's fine. These ones are a little bit tougher to get any work done, but eh, fuck it. Yeah, exactly. It's really more about like answering your guys' questions and, and really kind of uh, giving general feedback and stuff. Yeah. No, this is cool. That's cool. I like it. It's fun. You, yep. know, you, don't, you don't feel so alone. <laughs> we also don't get much work done. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Sometimes you need the balance, though. Yeah. Okay. Mal five cards is he done? Done with this? No, no, no. This this still has some ways to go and stuff. 
uh, Cobra. I'll, we'll see if um, maybe uh, Marcelo can. Uh, well, you know, uh, I'll see if I can uh, get you the link to the, um, the division stream. I think if you just look up Twitch, uh, the division, uh, you, you'll find their stream. It's actually sponsored by the division, so you can take a look at it there. The division sponsored <laughs> by the division. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I might check that. I might check that out today. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I, I um, it, it would be really good for you too because uh, they, it, it's so focused on, on character design, um, and all the different layers of of clothes and stuff, and uh, it's just like the technical aspect of making the, all of that work, because it's it's more of like a, it's like a action shooter, RPG. Is what it is, right? Yeah, so, it looked it looked beautiful from 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 what I've seen so far and stuff. So, yeah, Marcel, I think that's the one. Um, but so, in order to make an RPG successful, you gotta have loot, right? Yeah, and you gotta have like visual cues of what your loot looks like. So, um, that becomes a huge, huge challenge to thanks for for the uh, follow. Appreciate it. The uh, the character team to make sure that everything works right right does this beanie work with this coat or you know oh, or does this does this shirt you know work with all of these different twenty five coats right so it's it becomes very um, limiting into what you could do and they were they were it's interesting because they were talking about like different body sizes and stuff too they said yeah. well you know we decided that um, you know because it's a, it's it's also a cover based shooter so. You know, yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we didn't we didn't want to give uh, different body styles because it uh, will tweak the gameplay, right? If you have a smaller oh, frame person, you're not going to be able to get hit as much. So you have just a bunch of small people out there, right? So they're like, well, we had to. So a lot of people were asking for different body types, but they had to they had to can it because it really changed the whole uh, balance of the game. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so. that makes sense. Yeah, that's so, cool though, right? Yeah, it totally makes sense from from that point of view. Once you once you uh, you know talk about it like that, you're like, oh yeah, yeah I can see that. Okay, got it. Good. Uh, I got a question here. Yep. So Dan, you work in Seattle or another branch of Microsoft? So I'm at the Coalition in Vancouver. So it's uh, Microsoft in Vancouver. And then, uh, so where are you guys from anyway? That's from Darth. Uh, I'm originally from Canada. Lived in the states, and now back in Vancouver, Canada. And Brian, you can say we're. I, I'm in. Um, I am in California, in San Jose, the heart of the Silicon Valley, just yep. uh, about uh, about an hour to forty five minutes south of San Francisco. Yeah, I still live in. I lived in SF, but I also lived in Redwood City, which isn't too yep. far. Yeah, that's about uh, about a half hour from here. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> I bring this here over. Uh, give me one second. I'm gonna step out for a uh, restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Now I have you all to myself. Ah, 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 ah. No, I'm just kidding. How's everyone doing today? Hello. You were born in Vancouver. Oh, cool. How are things over there? I heard it's really expensive nowadays. You know, it's ex it's expen yeah, it's expensive. Uh, it's nothing compared to a place like San Francisco, though. Just a heads up. Because San Francisco is really expensive. So what I'm going to do here really quick, I've defined this here. I'm going to put it over to the other side. Let me try this. I'll show you guys a little tricky trick. Are you going to IFCC or Earth at THU? Not as of yet. Not planning on it. It's really rough. Ah, very cool, Modeler. That's awesome. Love to hear how to get. Uh, would love to learn how to do this for fun. Not to info anything like for this or some kind of calls. Are you talking about the 3D stuff, um, Cato? Talking about the 3D stuff, there's tons of like free tutorials and everything online that's pretty easy to, to find for the most part. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, like, Blender's free. I don't know how many of you guys use Blender and stuff, but if you use Blender, Blender's free out there. Uh, you get betas for a lot of the, a lot of these programs and stuff as well. So, trying to catch up with as much as what you guys are saying. It's weird not having music, eh? It's weird. So I might start doing uh, Wednesdays as well. Uh, Wednesday nights is what I'm thinking. Because it's, it's just really good. Okay, it's I'm good back. time for me. Um, okay. Uh, but but Cat Catabaya said I would love to learn how to do this just for fun. Is there enough info online to get going with this, or is something is some sort of college program necessary? Also, is there alternative software that is not as ex as expensive that can help build the foundation for this type of art? It's mm -hmm. a very very good question. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can do this for fun or you can try to do it professionally. Either, either one, uh, really depends, um, on you. Uh, there, it is a very unique time, uh, in the industry right now where, um, a lot of industry professionals have been, um, uh, doing, um, Thank you, Vince, for the follow -up their own versions of software or of um uh, hold on hold on one second guys hey okay, uh, sorry. hey thanks andy for the follow uh just give you guys a heads up we're probably not going to do any more reviews or anything any more feedback today it's just been super busy with brendan and i talking back and forth so what we'll do is uh, I'll talk with Brandon and we'll try to find a good time where we'll actually do like a proper yeah review feedback session. Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Sorry, keep going, Brandon. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, um, so it's a very unique uh, to Ray Chung ninety four. Thank you for the follow. Um, it's a very unique time in the industry right now where you have a lot of top professionals uh, um, making their own tutorials. So uh, when Gumroad came out uh, a couple of years ago. Um, it launched a great opportunity for um, the people in the industry that have all this knowledge uh, to uh, make some, you know, money on the side, that kind of stuff. Uh, so yep. uh, it's just the the market is full of amazing, amazing tutorials um, and mentorships and all kinds of stuff right now. The amount of education that you can get. Um, uh, outside of a college uh, arena is huge right now yeah. huge so if you've got you've got the the gusto um, I would say you can get a, a damn good education outside of college what I think the thing that's really lacking right now in um, in that aspect is uh, core art knowledge right like des yeah. actual design color theory uh, perspective, uh, you know, thanks for the follow, Ray. Value, knowledge, uh, that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that's really the, like the the core um, art skills. Uh, it are that's the stuff that's missing right now. The stuff that's out there is amazing, but it's more technical based. Like how do you how do you work with this particular software? How do you make this yeah. particular model? That kind of stuff. So it's amazing for learning that stuff, but. Uh, for as for the de like learning design and, and and all that stuff, that's where the art education really really uh, is still uh, valuable. Yeah, it's it's a good point. I, I was pr I, I think I was pretty fortunate where I took um, when I went to college. I took uh, art first and foremost in anything. Like I took the three D programs and stuff, but I took like all the all the traditional art stuff, which I think for me was 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 uh, pretty helpful for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, Doing. thanks very much for the, the second part of that question is, uh, is it affordable? Um, do you have to buy all this software? No, you, you don't really. I mean, there's, if you want to get the big, big pieces, there's, you know, there's tutorials. I mean, there's uh, trials and all that kind of stuff, but there's also Blender, which is a free 3D core program. Thank you, Billy GPEG. There's a lot of people that are doing um, uh, Blender tutorials. If you look at um, if you look at Master Xeon X E O N one hundred and one, uh, his name is Jerry Perkins. <clears throat> if you just do a Google search for him, 
uh, he does a lot of Gumroads uh, that are um, on Blender. Blender is a free program, so that's a way that you can get up and running there. Um, there's lots of other smaller free softwares that you can get your hands on um, and trials and stuff. So it's definitely possible. Definitely possible. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to sink in a ton of money um, right off the bat. I know. Uh, I know Joe. Or sorry, Swindler Dog. Swindle Dog. He's a he's a big uh, Blender guy too. Like yeah. Blender's free and stuff. So. Yep. Oh, this is probably not the best way I wanted to go about it. Uh, question: Are any of you going to IFCC hey, or you. THU? Twenty fourth calendar girls. Thank you very much for the follow. Are you going to go to IFCC or THU? Oh, man, not this this year. Much like last year, is going to be pretty. It's pretty packed. Well, you're busy over in the studio right now. <laughs> it's it's very busy <laughs> to say the least. It's it's yeah. I, I mean, I'm 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 swamped with everything. The family stuff, with with yeah. work stuff, with uh, personal stuff. Um, if I, only I don't know, we I, had time, right? Man, that's it's the it's the one thing you just never have enough of. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. That's why we stream at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> that's dedication, man. That's dedication. You know, it was funny. I didn't think there would be that many because uh, first starting off, I was like, oh man, is it gonna be? Is there gonna be that many people watching at um, this early in the morning? But then I thought about it. I was like, well, it's really early for us. But if you're on the on the yep. East Coast stuff, this is prime. You know if you're I mean? anywhere else, in the, and you know what? At first, I thought. You know, we have a huge disadvantage because we're um, so, you know, anything that's going on in the rest of the world is like super early morning for us. Yeah. But it's actually good for us because we can reach everywhere in the world if we just get it's up early. Point. Yeah, it's it's a good point. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I like it. I guess, yeah, it's been, this is it's early for us and stuff. But if you get in the habit, it's perfect, right? So, yep. yeah, it's, people are saying, yeah, it's 4 p.m. in the U.K. and stuff. So. Yeah, man, eleven year. Yeah, so yeah, the Phoebe, Phoebe's in Baltimore, and it's uh, it's eleven a.m. over there. So that's good. It's cool. Yeah. Completely agree with you, Milky, about um, the tutorials and stuff. Yep. Actually, this seems like it's a fucking perfect time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. yeah. Um, do you use Marvelous Designer? What do you think about it? Yeah, I use it all the time, actually. Um, uh, it's great. I, I I'm not as good with it as I would like to be, but I have I. I use it pretty fairly often and stuff, and I will be using it for pieces, uh, art pieces I'm doing in the future. So, yep, cool. It's pretty good. Yeah, uh, pretty good. I would say um, it's definitely useful, um, yep. but don't don't use what you get out of Marvelous Designer as your final piece. Like, make some changes to it. Use it as your as a base, and then build on top of it. Don't make because if you look at something, it's pretty easy to tell if you made it in marvelous designer right so you don't want it to just be like oh that's marvelous designer work okay cool um like make some different stuff with it or, or um uh use it as a base as a base and then build on top of it yeah that's that's a good point yeah still you still need to do some it still needs some loving afterwards, yes basically. yep 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 Da, 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 da. Travis Chris, thank you for the follow, bud. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, you know who has a really good core art program is um, conceptart.org. Oh, okay. The, the Level Up guys. Um, awesome, awesome stuff, right? Uh, I totally forgot about those guys. But the Level Up guys um, have, like, this system where you start um, in, like, level zero or level one, and then you do all the assignments uh, and you get critiques and stuff. Uh, and then once you have graduated that level, then you move up or you level up into like higher, more um, complicated um, art ideals. So they, um, I think they're probably one of the one of the only main ones that really focus on um, art basics, right? Okay, that's that's good to know actually. Yeah, yeah. So take take a look at those guys. Uh, conceptart.org um, slash uh, level up. Those guys do really good stuff over there. Very cool. Hello, chicken dinner. Win a win a chicken dinner. Win a win a chicken dinner. One of the better names there is on Twitch. Yep. Congratulations on getting that one. <laughs> it just beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, right. <laughs> oh, Autodesk software is free for now for education. Interesting. 
Oh, yeah, that might be that might be true. So here's I, the I, thing, right? Go go to your local college, sign up for two classes, you get six units, and then um, you get education prices for all your software. Oh, done. Take them online as well. You don't have to go in. Easy. I did that for about six years. <laughs> That's pretty good. I was talking to. Uh, this is a question for you, Brandon. Like when you yeah. when you're on here and stuff, you're you know you're just sculpting away, you're working on stuff, trying to reach out to people and stuff. Like, do you have when it comes to Twitch or whatever? And I actually asked this to when I was on with Dead Mouse. I actually asked him this as well about like his thought about Twitch and stuff. Do you have an overall goal with using Twitch? Or is it basically just having fun shooting the shit, reaching out to people? Or is there like a bigger kind of plan you have? Like, are you are you eventually wanting to go for like a subscription base, or what's the? Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, you do everything for personal reasons, right? You know, just yeah. you know, go out and and I get a lot of questions about like, well, why do you, um, you know, what do you get out of teaching all these people this stuff, right? And, you know, so there, for me, it's it's doubly faceted. It's um, I get because I, I enjoy teaching. Um, I went through. I learned pretty much all of this stuff over again on my own, um, yep. and th the torture that I had to go through to learn all this stuff on my own uh, it, it was just horrendous, right? And I I want to save as many people from that as possible. <laughs> so if I can uh, if I can give back, um, it makes me feel better, and, and it like it. That's that's one of the personal reasons for me. Is being able to give back and and helping people out. That's just kind of the kind of guy that I am. That's so that's gonna... that's one big reasons why I I do live streams. Um, I used to do uh, other stuff where I would do like um, Google Hangouts with people and teach them ZBrush and and that kind of stuff. But um, it was a little bit more like hard to set up and and you know difficult, a little bit more difficult to maintain your list of people that wanted to do it. So I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll, do, I'll try streaming. There wasn't a whole lot of people doing art streams. Um, yeah, you know, about a year ago, or maybe uh, six months ago, right? It's just totally blowing up right now. Um, but uh, so that's one one reason why I do uh, streaming is so that I can I can give back, and it also helps me do work, right? So nobody wants to just sit here and and watch you, you know, do nothing, right? They want to yeah, see st point. like stuff actually being done. Which unfortunately on this stream it isn't doing too much, <laughs> so I have to excuse us on that one. <laughs> no, that's, but that's uh, okay. this is the talking stream. Um, yeah. But uh, the other thing too is you know it you know I'm, I, I got to be honest it's you know when you're when you're um, trying to get work in the industry right right now I'm I'm not working as a gay, as a character artist I want to yeah. work as a character artist so it helps me to. Um, not only give back, but also get exposure, right? I mean, that's really, honestly, that's that's, that's what, what it's, it's about. about isn't it? Yeah. Right. And, and not only just like, oh, hey, give me a job, I'm just you know, whatever. It's like you know, exposure as in um, having other people um, give you critiques, right? And just getting your work out there and shown and known to people, you know. So it's not just about, oh, I'm doing this to get a job, you know. It's yeah. more about like getting your art out there. Being involved in the community and you know it's it's an amazing community you know yeah it's it, it, uh, that's something I've been pretty Im impressed about is like uh, just the cool community and stuff like that so I, I'd agree I'd agree with you on all that yeah hey actress and suing artist was saying there's a lot of people who would have the opposite view of you if they would rather watch people struggle for years and learn back in basis so I got a I got an opinion of this too this isn't it's not the nicest story but I got to be honest like. When I first started off in the industry, I obviously had some good <laughs> friends and stuff, but I really didn't have anybody who art-wise mentored me, I guess. AJ Brute, thanks for the follow. So that kind of uh, – that was a real bummer, actually. So, you know, especially starting off early in the industry because I was pretty young when I started off in the industry. Uh, I was like 20 or something like that. So I didn't have a lot of um, – I didn't have a lot of people kind of take me under their wing and show me the ropes and kind of – Help me out along the way. I, I had like I had good managers and stuff like you know Scott Lee and some other people and stuff that were that were uh, great managers and that. But I didn't have a ton of people who actually mentored me. So that was kind of a, a bummer and wish that I had. So now I try to do what I can to like help other people out because I found it kind of sucked. I had to kind of go home and learn all the shit on my own basically, and uh, kind of sucked in a way. Yep. 
But it makes you want it more, too, I guess. So. Oh, man, it totally. Like, when you spend all of your waking time thinking about all this stuff, and, you know, it just it just feeds the fire. Yep. Yep, it's true. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure that uh, my wife would have a interesting opinion of, of my work. <laughs> or my, my work ethics. She's like, I, I bet you she'd probably be like, yeah, he's really dedicated, um, and uh, I just wish that he would do... St- like his work faster so that he can hang out with us. <laughs> that's a tough one. Well, that's that's why I think kind of doing the mornings now is a little bit better. Yep. You know what I mean? Because like now, if I'm not working late, it gives me an opportunity to hang out with a wife uh, a little bit, you know, like later on kind of thing or whatever. So <laughs> it's a double-edged sword, my friend. Yes, it is. And it's a never-ending thing. So for any artists out there who are watching and stuff, like it, it, I, I know people, obviously, it's really it's important bread and butter. Get your first job in the industry, but you're never uh, you're never done with it yep. after that. Like you got to keep oh. uh, you got to keep going. Was, so it was really interesting. Um, so when I was working in the medical and dental industry, um, I I didn't have that uh, constant stress on my shoulders of yeah i have to learn this new software i have to i have to work longer i have to do more stuff on my portfolio i have to learn this software i have to learn this technique you know i i was actually free from that um for a good four or five years and i didn't realize how much i um that weighed on me every single moment of every single day until the moment uh that i decided i want to get back into it and from there, that that literally that moment was like, all of a sudden I felt all that weight back and was like, I have to learn everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, man. Well, I feel even like right now, I feel like I, I, I so I, I'm joking around a little bit. I do know how to use, I do know how to use ZBrush a little bit and stuff. Like I, I do have to use it for work from time to time. But yeah, I feel behind the ball too because I haven't. Yeah. Uh, it's something I got to get caught up on and get more up to date with and stuff not that i can't do it with Mudbox, but yeah it's another tool in the toolbox you know yeah I mean? exactly um, all right hey dan i um i gotta start wrapping my side up here um i gotta yeah, no worries i'll probably go i might put on some music and go for another 15 minutes i'm thinking okay okay yeah, um yeah so i think we got uh, at least most of my side answered um so as for what we're going to be doing in the future, so uh, there's a couple of things that Dan and I want to do. Um, we definitely want to do another one of these where we kind of just chat and answer questions and, and that kind of stuff and just kind of BS. Um, definitely want to do one of those. We also want to do uh, a, critique, hey, a critique session um, where previously, before the stream, we'll probably have people um, uh, upload to Facebook um some of the stuff that they want uh, critiques so um we'll probably do something like that we want to i don't know all the details yet but uh we want to do something like that um figure it out yeah we'll figure that out uh and then the other big one was um i'm probably going to take time and teach dan some zbrush stuff so that'd be um, awesome man that'd be really cool i definitely want to open the floor up to people who want to watch who are interested in in um, learning the basics of, of ZBrush. It's a little bit more of a targeted stream, um, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that will be interested in, in, in picking that up. So those are at least three big things that we want to do coming up in the very near future. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I gotta get I gotta get rolling. Um, thank you very very much to all the follows and all the people that uh, were uh, that are and have been hanging out. Um, that was it, great. It's that been great. yeah. It's been awesome, man. It's been awesome picking your brain and being able to uh, help people out with their questions and stuff. So yeah, vice versa, dude. That was great. Absolutely. Cool. Um, and thank you, big thank you to uh, Marcelo, my mod. Uh, he's been awesome helping me keep Thanks up with Marcelo. questions and stuff. So, yeah, he's he's been super duper helpful. Um, so yeah, if you guys if you guys like uh, what we do, uh, make sure to follow us uh, on here on Twitter. Um, follow Dan, follow me, um, and uh, you know we'll keep doing this stuff. So keep keep track of Dan. Uh, Dan does uh, a lot of uh, uh, forgotten screams. Thank you for the follow. Um, he does a lot of streams in the morning, just like I do. So um, take a to keep a peek out for him. Uh, and he uh, on, usually on his streams, he does a lot of like um, 
uh, introducing other artists and stuff too. So peek your head into Dan's stream whenever you can, and uh, you get a bunch of other people that are um, on Twitter that do streaming uh, that you know we suggest that you guys uh, take a take a look at. So yeah, it's definitely good. Definitely good. That's cool. Okay. Awesome, Dan. You're the man, Dan. You're the man. Dan. Yeah, I'm gonna probably probably <laughs> stay on for another uh, 15 minutes or so. Just okay. To wrap it up and stuff, but awesome, buddy. Awesome, man. We'll it's talk been to you soon. very, very fun. All right, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Um, thank you for all the follows and the love and everything. We'll see you guys very soon. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned something. But most of all, I hope you're inspired to go make some cool, dope art. So go do it. All right, guys. Talk All to right. you soon. See you, buddy. All right. See you guys. All right. Bye.